Hey guys, welcome to this week's edition of Movies, Music, and Mayhem. I am your host, Rachel Silvestrini. Welcome back, or for the first time, I guess. Um, so 2020's one's been starting off a little bit interesting, but um, the show's been phenomenal so far. We had Christian Harloff on last week, and this week we have Paul the Powder Keg Preston. So everybody give a warm welcome to Paul. Hello. <laughs> I'm li- they're applauding. I just we can't hear it, but they're yeah. applauding. I, I wish I wish I had like a soundboard, but I'm not that special. Like I'm lucky if I can work a mouse and a keyboard at the same time. So uh, I think it's why Adam and I haven't done many live shows because we love post <laughs> yeah. ten times the gags once you can throw them in after the fact. You know, it's true. It's it, it's it seems fun, but it seems like also like a lot of work. And I'm like, oh, it can be good or fast. Uh, well, Normally I come chock full of bits, but you know, I've seen this show and <laughs> it's just conversating. So that's what I bring today. I got nothing. I brought nothing, you know, we didn't bring any, you know, if you saw the smash or any of the, oh, yeah. you know, we bring the bits, but today we're going to just yammer and I know you're good at it. So I'm trying to try and keep up. I mean, to be fair, I'm pretty sure that you and Adam were like just made up of 50% bits anyway, oh, like true. just like half of who you are. And then when you get together, it just like, goes crazy. Then it's 100% bits. Then it's all yeah. on, yeah, 100% between the two of you. <laughs> yeah. So how my, is everything? My Facebook going? quote, you know the Facebook quote that's right under your photo? Or oh, yeah. The, the bit above all things. I mean, always. True. Gotta so, commit to the bit. Yeah. It, it's And also, you know, I have my glasses on, so I'm, I'm rather studious today as well. So this is This is kind of the, the bane of digital... I'm like, what's the question? What did they write the right thing? Did they write the right thing on their board? I can't even see it, you know. So I know. I'm happy when I, we get I, back into a studio. It's like the only time I like pop in my contacts is when I have to go on this. Otherwise, it's like glasses, and then like I try and take them off with enough time so like there's not like red divots on the side of my nose. Because yeah. I've become a trombone scary. player now, reading things, you know. Uh, yeah. But uh, I've just gone glasses now. Screw it. Yeah, I called it. I call it the uh, the paper push up. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Bring your own resistance. Steve wants to know uh, where I got that thumbnail photo. I actually got it from Paul because I threaten all of my guests with either you send me something you want or I dig into your Instagram and Facebook and find anything that I want. (laughs) Well, there was a chance to do a bit. So I sent in a headshot, but then I sent in a shot with me, uh, some... Uh, filter that made me shoot Spider-Man laser or uh, Superman lasers out of my eyes. Um, and then that one that you used and then the picture of me in high school band posing with my saxophone, any one of those you want to use and you use the one that, and this is a true story behind that picture. Uh, I got food poisoning years ago. Um, not too long ago, maybe like just four or five. And I vomited that night. I don't puke much. I don't drink. So I don't puke much. You pick up my slack there. I'm sure Rachel, I, <laughs> and, I, I am. Uh, you know what? I, 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 I drink for you and you eat my meat. Wait. Keep keep putting them down, Rach. Phrasing. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so I vomited and my all the blood vessels in my eyes burst. And I had Edward, uh, Team Edward eyes, you know, for about a month and a half. I felt better the next day. Puke. You know, you puke, you feel better. Ha ha. But then people were like, dude, you look like. A vampire, you look like you know, you're twinkling or whatever the okay. hell it is they do. Are you, are you craving flesh? Um, <laughs> it's pretty much the Not only currently, yeah. hey, <laughs> phrasing. Uh, yeah, no, somebody, uh, I know Alex, uh, Shashek on uh, the Facebook comment was like, you know, what happened to Paul? And I was like, you spent too much time with Tom. Um, <laughs> that much is true as well. Yeah, that's also true. I mean, you can't spend too much time with him, he is an amazing guy. Um, well, but, the bit was that he was an ayahuasca vision that I had when we went out to the desert and then we teamed up together to play. So, uh, I think looking upon him, my eyes started to bleed. Yeah. That's where <laughs> I, that's, that's another good origin story for that. Like, I'd be like the Joker. Why are your eyes red? I'll have a hundred different stories. Yeah. That'd be great. Just, it's like two truths and a lie, but a million lies and one truth. Maybe yeah. <laughs> truth sounds like a lie, but it's true. You know what? I can't play that game anymore, and I can't play Never Have I Ever because I've done so much in my life that I'm like, shit, what fucking haven't I done? I have to start like thinking of like weird things. I'm like, uh, I've never had 
car insurance for a decade. Like, <laughs> you just you're just gonna move the game into like adultifying yourself and things you failed to do. Yeah, I have to. Right. People are, people are always trying to like one up each other. Like, oh, I went skydiving. I'm like, done that. <laughs> did that for high school graduation. Like, oh, I did this. I did this, and I'm like. Yep, did all those. So now I'm like, ah, I've never been a real person. <laughs> Fight me on that one. I'm going to get all you fuckers. Um, Isn't it all I, skydiving? I thought the game was like, I vomited on somebody during sex, you know, and then, <laughs> right, you know. Yeah, it can be whatever you want it to be. I get people real mad when, when I literally start doing like real world things. I'm like, I haven't had a nine to five job in the last decade. And people are like, you asshole. I've never been nice to the elderly. Me. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! You la you can laugh at them as long as you pick them up afterwards. Exactly. That's that's good advice for the kids out there. The I kids, mean, the kids fucking love this show. I I, I, I hope so. <laughs> I mean, I don't care at this point. I'm like, ah, I just get to hang out with my friends and and bullshit and pretend that it's you know Saturday and we're in Glendale and uh, we just got to hang out yeah. for hours and hours and. God, I hope that ho happens soon. <laughs> it's fun for the whole fucking family. <laughs> I really I like your uh, your mic. Put the Karen's Army bracelet on. That's a good call. Yeah. I should have done that by now. That's, yep. that's guy like that. Yep, it's sporty because I, I, I wearing one. Oops. Oh, how dare! I mean, row. You, it, it's you've probably got like a million hidden throughout your house. So they are everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for live events to give them away, you know, like a Karen's birthday. I was going to give mm -hmm. them away or, you know, charge a buck or two and give the money to the, to the uh, scholarship. But <clears throat> uh, yeah. And then that got moved to a online event and there haven't been any live events since. So they're just kind of sitting there waiting, but which will be handed out one. Down again. below, by the way, guys, <laughs> if you want to donate to Karen's scholarship, it's, it's, it's listed down below in the description. Oh yeah. It's so um, much is true. It is. I like to do what I can. Now, I everybody knows that Karen loved the Ghostbusters. What is one movie that you think that just truly defines you? Or is your favorite of all time? Well, I have a favorite of all time. That's easy. On the movie, guys, I asked every guest that came on the show, about 250 of them. So I love that question. It's one of the greatest questions ever. <laughs> and it usually inspires panic, uh, you know, just clogging <laughs> in people. And... Uh, but it's a no-brainer for me. I always think the best picture, you know, to to a person is the one that's been with them for an amount of time. So I think No Country for Old Men is a brilliant movie. It's as an adult one of the movies I appreciate more than most in the last like twenty years. And <clears throat> something like La La Land though just has my heart like forever. Um, and but you're not going to beat Raiders of a Lost Ark. This is not going to happen. I mean, 39 years that movie's been with me. It'll be coming up on 40. This will be the 40th anniversary of that movie. Not There's even no joking. As soon as you said those words, all I heard was dun 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 dun, dun, dun like in my head, like I'm waiting in line for for the Indiana Jones ride at Disneyland. I'm like, oh, I want to. <sighs> mm. hey. I know. But yeah, I mean, that to me, you mentioned it the score, the iconic hero, the acting, the locations, the stunts, all hit it, you know, and just. <clears throat> Few action movies bring the stakes like they should and still have fun. They either like sacrifice stakes for fun, in my opinion, or they uh, or they're all stakes and no fun. You know, but the Raiders just sets up this is like a big deal. If Hitler gets his hands on the Ark, we're all it's over, you know, so that then he can go have fun. The stakes have been set and just continue to respect the stakes. All those things coupled with, you know, again, the the tech elements and movie making elements hitting it out of the park hundred percent now, but you it worded that interestingly. That's my favorite movie of all time, but is it the one that defines me? Like that's tougher to say, you know, like a um, movie that defines me. Like I just watched real genius for the 10,000th time the <laughs> other day. Like I think that kind of defines me. I'm not as smart as him, but I like to take that attitude into situations and kind of deflate the seriousness of what's going on with, you know, smart, smart alecky attitude what? and comedy, <laughs> which is what he does so well in that film. Um, I mean, planes, trains, and automobiles. Again, you got to go back, I think, to like Billy Joel defines me. 
if you, we'll get to, I know we'll get to music in a second. Second on the list. It's oh, great. Right. Right. This, this, but, this is like the least structured show you'll ever be yeah. on. So, I mean, we can s- sweep back and forth. Who cares? But see, Billy, I can pick moments in time in my life when the song was there with me. Like his songs don't tell my story. I never did coke, had a manager rip me off, you know, married a supermodel. But everywhere that one of his songs came out, I know what I was doing. I can I can tell you how the song defined the era uh, that for me, even if it was not for everybody, but just personally. So it's tough for a movie to do that because it comes out and then it's out and it doesn't change. It doesn't keep putting out new music like an artist would. So, but that still might be Raiders though. I mean, you may not have married a supermodel, but you did kind of marry Marion. That's true. Like, I always got really strong Marion vibes. Got Karen me. Allen vibes. Karen. Oh yeah. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Like a hundred percent. I don't know if she was just, I think Karen Allen, I think Marion Ravenwood would have kicked Karen Volpe's ass. Hate to say it. <laughs> I think that they would be friends. I think the drink, it'd be friends. Totally. Oh yeah. Right. But if it came down to like, I mean, that's the one place where they're different. I think Karen Volpe was not tough as nails like Marion Ravenwood in the first movie. Before they yeah, I mean to be fair, the characters. your Karen would sing at the bar that the other Karen would own. Like that's Correct. the relationship I see happening. Correct. Like yes. she would have and been in that bar in Timbuktu, you know. And Karen wouldn't drink, so that's good for Marion, who can then pick up her slack. Yeah. See, it's all about balance, <laughs> folks. You got to find the balance in life. <laughs> but I got—I mean, the Princess Bride is also one that sticks. Broadcast news. Uh, broadcast news quite well defines me, I think, because it's super smart but playful. And you know, I'm not super smart, but I, but I, you know, try to be. I, it's my goal in all my projects to like be as smart as something like broadcast news. And that movie is so prescient. Uh, I predicted everything that was going to happen in news with style over substance. And but there's a still a level of anarchy underneath it all with that movie in its own way. And then you know, there's. I, don't know, I get all the feels with that film. So I think the eighties, can I just say the eighties? Sure. Just let's enca- <laughs> encapsulate the entire yeah. decade. That they shaped me. Those movies shaped me and then stayed with me all since then. My favorite being Raiders, but let's go with the whole decade. Well, I think, I think some of the best movies rock you to your core and knock loose some ideals or ideas that you've had taken into your heart as like maybe fact and make you question things and change you in that way. Not like, force it down your throat, but just like literally slap you upside the head with like an alternate way of thought. And I think the eighties did a really good job of that. Mm-hmm. I think the eighties is underrated for a, uh, uh, as you know, people, the seventies has its Scorsese, Coppola, Spielberg, everybody, you know, and the easy writers and <laughs> what's that book, the Peter Biskine book, easy writers and, whatever oh, but your huge movies like godfather deer hunter rocky etc came out then and then the 80s were kind of fluff and madonna and blah 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 but i think the 80s put out some really great cinema and uh, i will always get their back oh for sure mm-hmm. i mean actually today i i know it was made and released last year but i watched valley girl for the first time wow and it's well not not the old valley girl but like the new musical one that amazon did Oh yeah, Wait, Elise's Solar Stone. It's not bad. It's actually really sweet. Like, mm-hmm. yeah. Did, have you seen it? No. It's no, not but see, I don't, I don't care. I mean, it seems like a. I mean, we have the the early one already. And and does a Valley Girl mean as much as it used to? Like in the eighties is when a Valley Girl was a thing. Oh yeah. So I don't know. It feels like a cash grab. But oh, I'm going to say that throughout every remake we talk about. Probably. I mean, it's it's, <laughs> it's kind of cute. Like the girl. Like it starts off it, the the whole. 80s is a flashback of Alicia Silverstone telling her daughter um, about this story of her when she was a valley girl, like back in the 80s, and how, like, you know, she met a boy, like a punk from Hollywood and whatever. And it's a really sweet way that they tell it. It's a musical. They use all 80s music. So I was like, fuck it. I'm going to wear my flash dance musical shirt and, like, fucking rock it out today. So I was listening to, like, the bangles and everything before we jumped on here. Because that's not, that's not bad, I guess. It's a good, it's a better way to redo that than just straight remake it yeah oh no no it's it's i feel like it's it was done lovingly because there's nothing i hate more than people being like oh my god this is better than the original and i'm like (laughs) no i mean it's not better but it's cute it's very sweet 
But uh, so tell me about uh, what, what were you saying about Billy Joel <laughs> and uh, your 80s music uh, and your deep, deep. Yeah, well, there you go. If you were to <laughs> ask me my favorite artist or band, it's yeah, it's Billy. Now, have you seen him live? Oh, but dozen whatever times I've I was in New York twice doing an auto show tour with GM. You know, I was the uh, the on stage narrator guy. Hey, thanks for coming out to the GMC booth. My name is Paul, and today we're showcasing the fabulous new. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> but I said, while I'm in New York, I'm going down to Madison Square Garden. Billy played there once a month, and I got to see two shows there where otherwise I had never seen him there. And then it seems like because he's you know he turned seventy this year, he's in the past decade. It seems like he's been doing. He hasn't put out any new music since ninety three. But for the past 10 years, it seems like he has been checking off venues he hadn't played before, which was great because he came out to the Hollywood Bowl and he came out to Dodger Stadium, two places he hadn't played. And he put on great shows at each. And you know, it was funny when I went to the bowl, I I, like, I cried at that show. I was like, I'm not going to see this. is it. I'm not going to see him again. I've seen him like four times since. And because a guy, even though he hasn't put out new music, he just loves playing out. And you can't ask for more of a guy that age to still want to get out there and, and play for the for the fans, you know, just play the hits, not be tired of them, yeah. make them sound fresh and bring out guest performers. And uh, they've been fantastic shows when I've seen them. Yeah. My, my very first full, like actual concert was Billy Joel, Nelton John face to face. Yeah. I saw uh, it twice or three times. Maybe. And yeah. I think, I think that was 98, 98 or 99. It was like 14 or 15. And um, it was supposed to be their like retirement tour, and I'm like, that's adorable. <laughs> like, yeah. that was 16, 17 years ago, and we're still like booking yeah. tours for as soon as the world opens back up again. So I don't think Billy's claimed that multiple times, but Elton, uh, it feels like Elton has, yeah, and it never. It, but even now, he you know did those. Vegas shows and said he was hanging it up after that. But isn't he the guy who, if you donate a million dollars to charity, he'll play your event? I mean, Elton will just do that. like something he would do. Yeah. <laughs> like if you get a million bucks, you give it to a charity, he'll come play. Which but is I'm really like, cool. All right, guys. So let's start the uh, that crowdfunding and uh, let's get him to play my birthday. Yeah, Scream Labs. Come on. Let's go. Yeah, throw those in. We'll have a whole separate fund for that. Um, no, I would love to see Elton and Billy play again. Like that was the most amazing thing. Like I said, it was like 14 or 15 first real concert. And, uh, I knew every word to every song and danced for like four hours straight. It was mm -hmm. the most amazing thing. And that's actually what got me wanting to work in live entertainment. And, uh, yeah. yeah that's what the, uh, the Billy shows have become because he's not like, here's a new one. It's like sing along with Billy for two and a half hours or whatever. It's just, you know, get tired of it. But and I also grew up on them. So it's like, like that was like a part of my childhood. Like I know I was actually like still a child, but it was, it was like a part of like my upbringing being brought to life and getting to enjoy with my mom. That was fun. You just explained the why he's my favorite of all time. Okay. Yeah. And I kind of hinted at it earlier. It's his songs, the, the songs of my life, as cornball as that sounds, but they really are. I can tell you the concerts. I can tell you the people I was with. I can tell you what was happening in my life, who I was dating, what was going on. You know, it's all mapped out to the release mm -hmm. of his music. You know? Yeah, I think, uh, like, there are just those songs that, like, bring back memories. Like, every time I hear uh, For the Longest Time, uh, we'd always listen to it on the way to and from uh, driving from San Jose uh, to Santa Cruz. And we'd like me and my mom would just try and sing the harmonies and I can't sing. So it was very pitchy, but it was like the most fun thing ever. We're winding up 17 and trying to hit notes that I should not be trying to hit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't think he tries to hit them anymore either. I think in the live show, the, the band will take the high notes for him. And... It's just like a guitar whammy bar. Just <laughs> well, it's yeah, weird. You know, uh, what's her name? The, the percussionist and sax player and singer in his band. Oh, um, that's going to kill me. I can't remember her name, but anyway, she used to take the high notes on uh, innocent man, but the last few shows I saw Billy's taking the high notes, which means they took the song down, but what are you going to do? He's 70. So <laughs> dropped it an octave, put yeah. it down a different key. <laughs> and that was the great thing about the, uh, you could tell they were doing that a lot in the Billy and Elton show, but that's because they were playing each other's songs. You know, they, yeah. like, Elton would play, you may be right. And Billy would play, you know, Saturday night or something. And then they play with each other. And so you kind of got to modify everything for guest artists like that. And, but totally worth it. Yeah. That yeah. show was amazing. 
And do you remember your first concert? I do. Which was it? Foreigner. Shut up. I'm so jealous. Yeah. It, the original lineup. I mean, I think it's been an alternate lineup longer than it was the original lineup at this point. Mm -hmm. But they got Kelly Hansen in there. And if you know his history, he used to sing in the 80s with a band called Hurricane. Uh, which I consider the most underrated metal band of the eighties. <laughs> Insanely hard rock and good stuff. Like, but not like, you know, Anthrax and Slayer and all that, but just like good popular metal rock mm -hmm. they, and with outstanding production for the eighties, you know, and he was a lead singer and he was all over the place. He was so good. And Lou Graham was such a fantastic singer for foreigner. You had to get a guy in there who like getting Adam Lambert to do the queen songs and you got to get somebody who's, got serious pipes and so kelly's been singing with that band for a long time it's kind of like mick jones i think from the original foreigner lineup is the only guy still in the band it's like other than that it's like all stars yeah. they got like jeff pilson from dock in they got you know kelly hansen it's like all all stars now from other bands playing in Foreigner. but uh i saw the agent provocateur tour so that's i want to know what love is that was yesterday reaction to action i want to know what love is. is one of the most underrated love songs of all time it's just so good and it's probably one of my favorite like karaoke songs because it's like you can just really get into it and just cheese it up so hard like i think that i think that that song may be why i'm not allowed to have a wireless mic at karaoke anymore but <laughs> uh <laughs> well karaoke is interesting because there's songs I want to sing and then there's songs, you know, will be a hit and you mm -hmm. kind of got to go with the ones, you know, would be a hit. And I want to know what love is because it's, you know, when I saw them in Binghamton, New York in 1985, <laughs> uh, again, the first show I saw very young, um, they brought out the local Binghamton choir for, I want to know and the, you know, with the yeah. full thing, the cur curtain came down and they were there and it was like a big, huge deal thing. So yeah, if you can get the whole place, uh, singing along with you at karaoke. Yeah, it's a hit. You should do that song. And it doesn't matter how good you are. You'll it's blend true. in with everybody else. I can 100% vouch to that because as <laughs> I have stated before, I cannot nor should not sing uh, in public. Um, I think I'm good once I get like half a bottle of tequila in me. And I'm like, oh yeah, it like loosens me up. And I'm like, no, I just don't care anymore. <laughs> and then I belt it or as more accurately, scrout it. Um, <laughs> We do have a stream last from uh, Movie Fenobi. Uh, what a great guest. Hello, Miss Lovely and Miss Silastrini. Hello, baby. Uh, good to see you streaming more. Someday there will be a live event on the East Coast, and maybe you will be there 100%. Paul, you're kind, funny, and you are a kind, funny, and smart man. Great fun with you and Adam also. Love, Karen. Birthday rewinds. Yes, if you're, I'm going to post one. Uh, well, I posted it today, but I'll promote it tomorrow on our social. Oh. Um, yeah, when on Karen's birthday, I decided on Karen's birthday, May 19th, I decided to go back into the movie guys' archives. And in every show for something we did called the movie showcast, which ran for 200 episodes, uh, she would end the show with something called Karen's birthdays. She would go over the celebrity birthdays of the day, goof on everybody. We'd round table a bunch of stupid banter and continue to goof on everyone. And it was like a five to seven minute way to end every show. So I'm just pulling those out and posting one every week from the time it happened in whatever year. So the one I'm posting now is from January 17th, 2014, I think. Michael Coleman, one of the great uh, Chicago and uh, LA improvisers, was our, was our guest on that show. And we talked about Howard Stern's birthday, um, Jim Carrey's, and Zoe Deschanel's. So oh, nice. yeah, so it's never like a, they're never, they'll never be old. They're, you know, it will always be their birthdays, even if, <laughs> Howard Stern passed away. It's still his birthday, and we talked about it. So, yeah. So look for those every Thursday or Friday. I, I post them. That's awesome. Yeah, I I love going in and checking in just to be like, oh, those are the birthdays today, and then I'll like play it in the background while I'm like folding laundry or something. It's really fun. Yeah, movie fanobi. Yeah, is always comments, and that's very kind. So appreciate yes. that. Yes, we do miss Karen. She is still is such a light. Um, in Ghostbusters for life, a hundred percent. Legit, I cannot hear or think about Ghostbusters without thinking of Karen. Now it's just like, it's just synonymous. I'm like constantly looking for her in the background, like shots or something like that, just to see if she like pops in to say hi, because you know that that's where she would be. Um, yeah. 
but yeah, That's no, a shame I wish- that uh, she'll she missed the afterlife, which was coming out. You know, whenever that comes out now, oh. March I think it's due. The Jason Reitman one. Whatever. I mean, are you still planning on renting that theater? I would love to. Yeah. I mean, I. Yeah, absolutely. Because I remember, I remember that was your plan. Uh, uh, before well, the world shut down. Um, yeah, one of the many things we had to bag, which sucks. Just not bag, just just put delayed. on pause. Delayed. Just, well, if it comes out in March, I mean, we're not going to be vaxxed enough to yeah, no. do it. But maybe they'll push it again. You know, we blockbusters one, are still pushing. We just do one giant Zoom call and like do a massive watch along. I think that would be <laughs> hilarious. Yeah, if we had to. Uh, yeah. But uh, yeah, I, I I hope that we get to. I mean, if there is a if there is a live event on the East Coast, I'm going there. Like, I do not care where the next live event is. I'm going because <laughs> I miss you all. I miss all of the competitors. I miss Mark and uh, and Harloff. Like, it's just the family that you that we've built by going to these events every Saturday. Whether you're filming or not, or just stopping in to say hi because you were going to see a movie across the street, and you're like, "Oh, I'll just Saturday, I'll go see everybody and pop in and say hi." Like, it's just it becomes such a routine and such like a given that once it's gone, it's just kind of like a. <sighs> <laughs> it's like I miss my friends. <laughs> I know it's not the same watching football here I either. I the, every you know that would be Saturday would be that, and then Sunday would be watching football at. Yeah, you know, my friend Scott and I would switch around from Buffalo Wild Wings to Champs in Burbank to, uh, uh, what's it called, Busby's down in San, Santa Monica, and now I just sit here and watch it on the couch, like a yeah. putz. Like text each other every now and then. Stupid COVID, but hey, <laughs> I think uh, I think uh, Biden just put in for like one point three trillion dollars for a relief package for awesome. uh, for the when he comes in up. So hopefully a lot of that's going towards. Moving these vaccines so we can get back to playing and live fun stuff. And I haven't been to a the only live shows I've been to is the free for all I was in. Yeah. San Diego, one of the Comic Con shows. So I'm looking for more live stuff too. And I'd love to compete. That'd be nice. So Yeah. Well, goal. I mean, tomorrow is hold on, I'm I'm ready for this. Tomorrow is the awards for the Schmodown, uh, four o'clock Pacific time on uh the SEN's channel on uh, YouTube, so like set your alarms. We all got to be there. I'm up for two awards this year. I'm like, I forgot about that. Nice. Yeah. Well, you guys were the, the the pride of the den, no pun intended. But <laughs> yeah, I don't think I'm nominated for anything. I saw the award nomination. I don't think I'm nominated. I, you know, yeah, it's pretty clear. Not a good year. So that would I, be I mean, turned it, around. It wasn't really a good year for hardly anybody. Um, <laughs> But yeah, for some reason we got nominated for Heel Team of the Year because apparently we're heels. Um, and uh, we got nominated for a new Team of the Year, which I didn't know was a thing. Yeah. Um, so I have to get like all dressed up and make up and haired and so I can sit here in case I win. <laughs> you won't wear your flash dance sweater? I mean, I could. I could. <laughs> I think I'd get yelled at by, by Patty Harloff, I've- though. I have Captain Phillips on, I think. That's oh, cool. nice. Yeah. <laughs> I am the captain now. I mean, that'd be great if I won. Be like, I'm the heel now. Get out of my space. But uh, yeah, so that'll be fun. And then the following week is free agency. And then the week after that is the draft. And I'm like, can we just do this all at once? Didn't we? <laughs> can't, can't, can't we just compress this again like we did last year? Because that was eight hours of, it was rough and a very drunk crowd at the end of it. But it was done after eight hours, <laughs> yeah. not after three weeks. Well, more than that, because then what? It's the next week that rosters, I think, are can be filled out even more. I, you know, yeah, it's, yeah, it's gonna go on, and then people will start playing. What mid February finally? Uh, yeah, I think the first the first match is uh, February like nineteenth or the thirteenth, something like that. So, I mean, hopefully we'll get we'll get to the tables sooner rather than later, and. Uh, yeah, I would love to get back into studio, just even to sit and play and like be able to like look across, look six feet across the table at somebody that I'm playing against. That would be nice. Yeah, it, you know, it, you start smack talking and the audio gives out. What fun is that? Right? Oh yeah, game. Hey, you let's see, take <laughs> out of this game, and that's the bottom <laughs> line. <laughs> Your mom likes me more. That's all I have to say. <laughs> 
but yeah, we'll see how that all goes. I hope that we start doing live events very, very soon. Um, just that just encourages everybody to keep wearing your masks and get the vaccination when it comes out. Like, hey, I don't drink, but I know people who do drink always say, what are you drinking? So oh, what are you drinking? I, I'm super classy, but this is really good. I'm drinking the Kirkland Canadian whiskey Oak cask. Um, Costco it, whiskey. It, it's called, yeah, it's Kirkland signature. Um, it's a, a Canadian whiskey blend. It is actually really, really smooth and good. Like I was very hesitant about it because like my mom was like, I'm going to Costco. Do you need anything? I'm like, get me whiskey. She's like, all right. And then like picked this up and I was like, all right, tried it. I was like, you know what? It's, it's probably the smoothest off like non big brand, like $300 bottle of whiskey that I've ever had. You're putting it down. I'm not, you know, I don't see you stopping or. It's, not bad. <laughs> it's, pretty, it's pretty tasty, actually. Mm -hmm. What was, uh, sorry, somebody came in and asked a question. Movie, I made it to the draft in Atlanta. Oh, yeah, dude. The draft was amazing last year. So much fun. Atlanta, I'm actually really sad I missed Atlanta. Um, the draft is much bigger, isn't it? Yes. Kind of. They're only doing five rounds. Uh, for the draft tomorrow, I believe. So they'll have... Oh, no, I'm sorry. Not for the draft tomorrow. So tomorrow's the awards, and then the free agency, so everybody will have three locked in, and then eight teams, five rounds, so 40 people will get picked up. So I'm guessing probably around what, two, two and a half hours? Something like that? With all the banter? <laughs> the wheeling the dealing <laughs> that, that will take place i wonder i wonder if because as as uh christian announced last week uh we as and as per our contracts uh we as players now have the timeout option so i wonder if the managers are going to have a timeout option during the draft because it's like a timed draft they only have like a minute oh, and yeah, half yeah, like two that. minutes yeah yeah so oh darren you got it Guys, I can't keep up with the, the the questions in the comment in the comment section because I'm focusing. But if you have guys, if you have any questions, throw them to Streamlabs. Um, I unless I glance over and happen to see it, I I cannot promise I get to Wait, it. Darren has I got Darren's question. What? what would be your ideal five band festival from any time, dead or alive? Okay, so I answered this last week. So what would be Did yours? You really? Yeah. Well, I mean, look, dead or alive. I mean, uh, well, listen, I I have never been to Coachella, but when they had, what was it called? Old, old Cella out there. Uh, what yes. was the, what was the, what did they call that? Um, oh my God. I have a sweatshirt from it. Wonder. No, it's not wonder. Uh, I think I saw you wear that at a lot at a live show once or a taping. Yeah. I, I wore, and I wore it the studio. I'm so jealous. Did you go to that? No, my best friend worked it. Cause I was on tour at the time. Cause it happens like it happened the weekend after Coachella. I think somewhere around there was like, right. Because I know it's Coachella and then Stagecoach, which is Coachella for country kids. And then I think after that was o Old Cella. So it was like mid, it was like early May, I think. Um, but like yeah, I, I, I might not have asked for much of a better lineup than that. It was McCartney, yeah. Roger Waters, Stones, The Who. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not so much of Dylan and Neil Young. I mean, I think that's. I mean. I mean, I would throw in Queen. Because I love Freddie Mercury like nobody's business, like more than anybody probably should. Um, and they were threatening to do another one. A desert trip. Thank you. Desert trip. Right. Thank you. Very uh, much. And someone threatened to do another one with Led Zeppelin reuniting, and that would be insane. But um, yes. I mean, who knows if that would ever happen? But I think I'd probably have to go with. I think I'd have to go with Queen too, because the the live performance was so insane with them. So Queen, Beatles. Um, and I'm going to get a little like I'm gonna veer off track because I, I should say, Billy, I should say the stones, but I've seen them. So this is going to be a, uh, a never have I ever I never have I seen them. Uh, yeah, we're going back to that. Um, <laughs> so it's, it's a, it's probably Zeppelin. Uh, who did I just say? Oh, queen. Mm -hmm. And. See, I've seen uh, I've seen Prince. I've seen Rage Against the Machine. I've seen uh, 
going through my favorites of all time. Um, I've seen you too. Springsteen, Rush. I don't know. So maybe I'd have to dig back into the seen it before. I'd probably put Neil Young in there one more time because every time I've seen Neil, it's a different show than the one before. I saw one, he was with an entirely blues band. I saw him once with Crazy Horse and they just played the ugliest rock dirty grunge show you've ever seen. I saw him once and it was just guitar and harmonica. I saw him another time at Farm Aid and he had uh, an organ. That was it. He did the whole show. <laughs> so I know it's going to be different every time I see him. So Neil Zeppelin Queen, who else was? Oh, Beatles, of course. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, so that's one more. Um, who was supposedly amazing? Like James Brown. All <laughs> right, James Brown. Now, yeah. You know what? That just leads to some really interesting, like, possibilities for like guest appearances during each other's sets. <laughs> I'm yeah. down for that. <laughs> Yeah, oh, can you imagine Robert Plant joining Queen for a tune? I mean, that'd be awesome. Oh, oh, uh, <laughs> James Brown heads up the Beatles with Billy Preston and the Keys. I mean, that'd be great. So, be so good. Yeah, I think I that's mean, it. There's your five. Nice. Yeah, I, 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 one of the bands that I've never seen that I, I have to before I die is the Foo Fighters. Ooh, here's where I saw the Foo Fighters. It was the Tubes. The Foo Fighters and then ZZ Top at a biker rally. <laughs> that was a great show. <laughs> a Harley event. Uh, it's got an event. I can't remember what it's called. The, the it has, They do it every year. It's some, Is, oh, Sturges? No, it's out here. Um, I can't remember what it's called. But anyway, they set up, they have like a whole city of vendors and things, you know, where you can buy and sell biker stuff. And then, yeah, then the tubes, Foos, and ZZ Top play. That show was great. That's fucking amazing. Yeah. Well, I mean, Dave, Dave Grohl is a huge, like, he loves his bikes. Like, when I used to live in Tarzana, he would just live down the road um, towards Encino. And we would see him, like, we knew, I knew when he was recording because he would get frustrated in the middle of the day. And his bike has a very, like, very distinctive sound to it. And he would just, like, ride around the block a few times. And like you just see this angry dude with like long hair and a long beard because he didn't cut his hair while he was recording either, and he would just be like, cur like strolling or like taking his bike on a ride like around a few blocks every now and then. I'd be like, oh, Dave's getting frustrated. And then I knew <laughs> that he would end up going within the next few nights over to the bar that I that was right near my apartment, and uh, he would go in there like Wednesday or Thursday nights just to hear it played out loud, but like at like one o'clock in the morning. So there'd be nobody there, or if they were, they were like hidden in a corner, drunk, making out or whatever. And he would just sit on the stage and like play new songs to hear them in a setting. And that was the first time I met Dave Grohl was when they were recording Skin and Bones. And I was like, you're Dave Grohl. Hmm. He's like, please don't yell that. And I'm like, no one's here. <laughs> <laughs> but he was so sweet. Amazing. Amazing guy. I just would love to see them play live. Because I think that their, their catalog is so iconic. And it has shaped music in such an interesting way um, just from the producers that they've used and the songwriting and just they're, they're all just amazingly talented musicians. Yeah. And certainly they've, they, they outlasted Nirvana. So by now you could do a 20, 90 minute show and even without including Nirvana, you'd know every song. Yeah. You know, that many high profile hits or just songs, you know, even if they weren't hits, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think, I think even awesome. my mom knows the words to Monkey Wrench. <laughs> <laughs> but now, so mom, I, mom, mom, thank me for it. Mom, mom, come down. <laughs> yeah, I, I could, I, I'm not allowed to play them in the house anymore because I just make the windows rattle. Um, now, you know how people have that thing about um, when they have a, a, they smell something, it reminds them of a memory. I have that with music. So like when I hear certain songs, I'm like, oh, now I really want to go watch this movie. Do you have any like songs that you um, instantly associate with certain movies? With movies? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Um, let me think about that. Um, I think everybody associates, uh, although I was a fan of the song before Wayne's World, I think everyone associates Bohemian Rhapsody with Wayne's World. I mean, when, it, when the part comes and they go into the huge rock part of the song, everybody bangs their head like Wayne and Garth. Yeah, that's what yeah. you do. 
Uh, but certainly, yeah, because if the, if the song gets you to do that, every then you're thinking of the movie, you know. Yeah. And so that that's probably a big one. Uh, let's see. Again, songs that were in movies. Or, or yeah. Uh, because basically, like anything from the Empire Records soundtrack, like uh, instantly, like is a deep seated need in my soul to now go watch the movie. So, like if I hear Sugar High or Till the Wet Sprocket, like I will instantly be like, okay, so I'm going to put this movie on. I'm just going to stop whatever I'm doing right now and I'll resume it in like an hour and 45 minutes. I think when I hear uh, one of the greatest songs of all time, Everybody Wants to Rule the World by the most underrated band of all time, Tears for Fears. I do think of Real Genius, which the aforementioned movie and the finale of that, when uh, they take care of, uh, what's his name? Dr. Hathaway? Are you wearing makeup? Uh, yeah, so <laughs> they take care of him and that song comes on. That was great. Um, someone's mentioning an immigrant song. Oh, you know yeah, what? There's that, a cover of that that, that now up. makes me think of the girl with the dragon tattoo and one of the greatest trailers I've ever seen the, the direct girl, with the dragon tattoo trailer and that cover of immigrant song that they use. And that's insane. Yeah. So see, I, I just have a very vivid memory of my niece still like, she was like barely one, I think still in like her car seat in the back seat. My sister and I are going through an in and out drive through right by shoreline and immigrant song comes on the radio. And from the backseat, this little voice starts singing along, and I'm like, "What is going on? This is the proudest moment of my life." <laughs> there was some weird video. Do you remember the weird video they put out a while back with like a couple of cats, Viking cats, on a boat, and they played the immigrant song? It was the greatest video ever, and <laughs> we should really share a screen if I can find it. Yeah, uh, but so I think of that when I think of the immigrant song too. See, there's yeah, there's a, there's just a, immigrant song. I think about you know. Uh, I'll think about that, but I'll also think about um, obviously Thor Ragnarok now. Like, just that whole battle scene was so good and perfect. Can, um, I, can I share a screen for a second? Yeah, yeah, you can, of course. Uh, let's see. How do I do that? Uh, go down to the bottom, click share screen, and then you should be able to pull up from application window or Chrome tab. There we go. All right. I don't know what this is, but I love it's, it so it's much. Perfect. <laughs> okay, I need I need a link to this because that's just so amazing. And if you never knew the lyrics, this helps. Yeah, I, I you know what I love watching movies with with uh, captions now, and now I'm listening to like songs, like the songs will pop up in there, and uh, the songs will pop up and. Uh, and it'll just be like the, the the lyrics will be at the bottom. I'm like, oh, that's that lyric. <laughs> I'm like, good to know. I'm it's like, not a movie, but, on, I, but you know, that's good. Think, I do think of some things somebody made with animated cats when I hear the immigrant song. And uh, there was there's that one sale song sale, um, and it had like this video of this cat. Like it was it was just this video that they put to the music, and it's like it jumps up onto the beam and like is staring into the camera as it walks to the wall, and then jumps onto the windowsill. And then as soon as the song says "sail," it like jumps out the window, like fl like flying squirrel status. It's so funny. <laughs> like I will watch that over and over and over again. I do not care. I'm like, this is the best. Thing. It's so stupid, but why? When I hear why? a. Oh, when I hear uh, Secret Garden, I think of Jerry Maguire. That's no flute, but I mean, it's they put that in there. Yeah, if I hear anything it, hipster, I instantly go uh, Garden State. Like if it's yeah. sad, wine, rock, I'm instantly like, this probably was on the Garden State soundtrack. <laughs> and you're probably right. Yeah, more than likely. Uh, we did just get in another Streamlabs, if it will re. Ooh, okay. From PC, hey sweet pea. Um, I'm not at all connected to music, but you but just started Zoe's extraordinary playlist. Do you watch much TV or have any interest in the show, Paul? Zoe's extraordinary playlist? Yes. I have never seen it. You give me two hours, I'm watching a movie. That's the problem. That's so I haven't gotten to a lot of television. I still haven't gotten to season three of Cobra Kai, which is killing me. And now I just started watching 
Headspace Guide to Meditation on Netflix. So that's like the only <laughs> show I'm watching. I don't know. I can't get to television. And I, I'm a member of the of a nominating committee for the union too. So I'm watching so many movies. <laughs> Hollywood does a thing called backloading. It drives me insane. They put they dump like 40 movies and you've got a month to watch them. And if I'm me, I want to see them all. If you're a Joe moviegoer, by the time they give 1917 best picture at the Golden Globes, you're saying, What I don't even know what this is. Mm-hmm. You know, because we we have a glut and you know, throw in all the awards movies and then couple them with, you know, a Jumanji movie or whatever the hell they put out a Star Wars movie, uh, something from Marvel every year, or DC. It's like Bad Boys for Life. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're not gonna see the the nominated films. So there's a ton of those to watch as well. And so I'm yeah, TV is is uh, eluding me. Sorry. Well, it- it's one of those shows that if you enjoy musicals, it's like a half step between a musical and like a, it's like a rom-com musical almost, but it deals with some really heavy issues. It's fantastic. Um, I have a recap show every Tuesday, um, but it's it's really fun. The, the cast is incredibly talented. It's got like Skylar Astin from uh, the Pitch Perfect movies and uh, Alex Newell. Um, uh, Mary Steenberger. I never can pronounce her last name. Mary Steenberger. Yeah, Virgin. Uh, plays uh, Zoe's mom, and then um, uh, God, what's this? It's name? like she sees musicals, right? When she looks at people, and they play out scenes with her in musical form, even though yeah. they're not really happening. Right? So the first episode, she goes in. The very first episode, she goes in to get an uh, an MRI because like she's having like pain behind her eyes, and her dad has some like unusual neurological disorder um that is slowly killing him sadly but uh so she goes in to get an mri and during the mri this all takes place in san francisco an earthquake happens while the guy is trying to pick the music to put into the mri so she can listen to that instead of the clinking and um (laughs) and everything downloads into her into her brain and so as she's leaving she likes starts hearing people's inner thoughts being expressed through song and sees them dancing as well. So like the premise. Yeah. Damn. Okay. So she's walking (laughs) back to her job and like the entire city of San Francisco starts singing help by the Beatles and like doing a group dance and like chasing her down the streets of San Francisco, like dancing. It's, it's actually really fantastic. And like, they hit, I think they've hit almost like a ton of different genres, but uh, it's, it's really, really fantastic. I cannot recommend it enough. It's one of those shows that just, it, it's feel good. It's, it's emotional, but like it, everybody's so talented. It's so great. Peter Gallagher, Gabriel. No, Peter Gabriel is not in this movie. It's not Peter Gabriel. No, it's not Peter Gabriel. Uh, <laughs> who's the guy with the big bushy Peter, eyebrows. Peter Gallagher. While you were sleeping, sex, lies, and Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I was right the first time. Fuck it. Yeah. Um, that's why you don't drink in Chipotle, guys. Um, <laughs> hey, season hasn't started yet. Don't judge me. Um, but yeah, he's in. He plays the dad, and he's phenomenal in it. It's really, really good. Yeah, he's got pipes too. I mean, he did uh, Guys and Dolls on Broadway. So yeah, and he's got some moves too. The guy might be a little older, but uh, he can dance. Mary, not so much, but she tries, and it's very sweet. <laughs> She's adorable. She's she's, so, like, she's cute trying. Um, Bernadette Peters is in it, and the two of them become really? friends, and it's like the most amazing thing. I'm like, can we just have a show of those two just like sitting down and having coffee together? Because I will watch that for hours. Wow, maybe I need to see this. I don't know. It's fantastic. Can't like I said, cannot. <laughs> yes. Oh, see now, Bill Maher comes back tomorrow, and then I'm gonna be. That's another hour I got to give to him every week, and I can only imagine. The mood he'll be in when he returns. So that's fun. <laughs> I'd, I'd love that show. Which one, Bill? Uh, late Real Time with Bill Maher. Oh, Bill Maher. And then oh. Oliver comes back in February, John Oliver. So there's another hour and a half. I mean, it's, I have a tar- hard time getting to TV. So Yeah. Especially but I'm so in love with Cobra Kai. I can't, I, I, I'm I actually waiting for my girlfriend to catch up with season two, and then we can watch season three. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm debating whether or not to watch it now because I'm like, you know, we've, we've slipped – we slipped out of the uh, the the dead zone of between our last match and the start of the season. I slipped out of that and started slipping back into study mode. So I'm like watching all of the movies and like going back into studying. And so I'm like, oh, I really don't have time to like watch TV unless it's like Zoe's because I'm doing a show on it and I absolutely love it. But I'm like, I also just have this need to continue a story and find out how it ends. So 
I hate watching shows now when I'm like, I can't binge the entire series. Like if I don't know that there's an end and know that it's good, it's really hard for me to start. But Cobra Kai was so good that I couldn't not. <laughs> and so I watched season one and then waited not so patiently for season two. And then I've waited not patiently at all for season three. And now it's here and I'm like, okay, we're confirmed for four. Do I watch it now or do I wait for four to come out and then binge one, two, and three before four comes out? So just a masochist, I guess. Hmm. Oh, speaking of, uh, I mentioned my girlfriend. Um, so I'm she's dating. Cute. Yes, and, and she's cute. And it reminded me, one of our songs is The Longest Time. Like he, that Billy Joel wedged his way onto like the, the radio, the, the Pandora station or whatever we were listening to during one of our first uh, dates. And so he's still doing it. He's still out there like making his songs part of my life. So he's a pushy old man. He the longest time. And I thought of that back then, but I wanted to say, yeah, that's, that's awesome. Um, that I mean, you can't, you can't go wrong with the Billy Joel song as like your song, you know, like you just, yeah. Yeah. The only thing I was disappointed in with Billy was moving out the stage production. Uh, I wish the song, the songs tell his story. Yes. You know, I wish they didn't just do a dance concert. I wish they told his story. Like I, it, it becomes, it doesn't always work when you see like the Jersey boys at work when the, when they tell their story with their songs. Um, other times it seemed the song seemed wedged into their life stories, you know, like remember when I wrote this, you know, it's like, yeah. but, <laughs> but Billy's songs, I mean, they so tell his, the guy didn't lay off with putting his life into the music. So I wish that was a straight show about the young man who moves to LA, starts playing in bars, you got the piano man, you get all these characters, and they all so much could have been done. And then, you know, the things I mentioned earlier, gets into drugs, gets a bad manager, marries four or five times, and I don't know how it ends, but he finds some kind of crazy happiness uh, eventually. And I thought there's a whole show there, and then they just did, let's all dance, which is fine. <laughs> yeah, well, there's that one, and then there's the queen one, which was I saw that in Vegas. Will rock you, yeah. Which is wow. Let's go to outer space, cause <laughs> I mean, the girl's name was Scaramouche. Like, talk about wedging shit in. Um, <laughs> and then probably the best worst musical I've ever seen is literally this one, Flash oh, really? the Musical. Was I saw it at the Segerstrom in um, uh, was it down in Orange County, and my friend was the music director for the tour, and so I happened to be in town. Called him up. He got me two tickets for me and my best friend, and we went. And he didn't tell us that that was the musical we were going to see. Like, like he didn't tell us what to expect. Like he, he, like with, with We Will Rock You, I was angry that somebody didn't tell me that my two drink minimum for the theater should have been consumed before act one. Like that's what that movie, that's what that show is. It's <laughs> yeah. fun. It's stupid. It's just, it's, they're highly talented to perform it, but it is a fever dream of a show. He didn't tell us that about F Flashdance and it was so bad to the point where we were laughing so hard in the audience and people around us thought that we were the biggest assholes. And I'm like, this, <laughs> we're like, this is so bad. And then we luckily end up, uh, we got to meet up with him after the, after the show. And he was like, yeah, everybody's going out to, uh, to this bar to go like drink and like go dancing. And I'm like, yeah, let's go dancing with Broadway dancers. Yeah. That'll be great for my self-esteem. Um, so we went and we talked to people who were like, they're like, so what did you think of the show? We're like, you're really talented. They're like, yeah, <laughs> we know. And I'm like, oh, thank God. <laughs> I'm like, I really didn't want to sit here and have to lie to you because it's the show is awful. You guys are great, but the show is so bad. There's a lot of that. <laughs> yeah. It also doesn't help that they cast literally an 18 year old to play Alex and a 45 year old man to play Nick. Ooh. Yeah. Little creepy. I'm like, stage makeup can only take you so far, guys. <laughs> Otherwise, yeah, Broadway, another thing that's taken from us momentarily. Momentarily, yeah, momentarily. it will come back. I, 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 it has to. Um, <laughs> PC just donated again, said, Wow, flexing on a single people, lol. Seriously, happy for you. Do either of you guys have a song with your best friend? Ours is 500 miles. Oh, that's sweet. 
Yeah, do you and Adam have a song? No, I don't think so. We went to one concert together, Genesis. <laughs> you know, it's a great show. It actually rained at the bowl and they had to stop playing after, after they'd already played for two and a half hours. Like we got to stop. I'm like, yeah, I think most people are done by now anyway, that these guys were just like tearing it up. Uh, but that doesn't mean that they, yeah, we have like a song. No, I don't think so. Yeah. I, don't, All my I songs mean, have been reserved for the ladies. Mm. Well, I mean, I literally just watched serendipity and I could 100% see Adam giving the same toast at your rehearsal dinner that Jeremy Piven does at, John Cusack's talking about like he knows that you've met the love of your life because he, he should know because he's your first wife. Um, yeah, it's true. No, I don't think I don't think Jessica and I have a have one song. There's a lot of songs that remind each other, remind ourselves of each other. Um, I think Red Red Wine from a very very horrible story that we are forbidden from speaking about in public um, comes to mind. Um, but like we we met going to concerts, so uh, and we worked a lot together at shows and tours. And I would sell merch, and she would be she was a photographer. We'd get each other as much jobs together as we could, and then she started selling merch. So um, a lot of things remind me of her. Pr pretty much like all of early two thousands pop punk, um, anything that was on Warp Tour in those early years. <laughs> um, yeah, it's a lot, but no. I don't think there's song like I don't associate people with songs usually unless it's like something incredibly enormous happened. And I also haven't been in a lot of relationships because of my touring, so not even that. I did I do I do always think about like my ex-boyfriend when I was 15 by from uh the Aerosmith song from Armageddon. <laughs> I don't want to close my eyes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that was yeah, it's awful. I think my friend Mike and I in college would sing Billy Joel. So there he is again, Billy creeping up and creeping in. And and he was his Mike's favorite too. So any of those songs we, we would consider ours. Oh, yeah. You know, for that period, for that Stormfront bridge and Stormfront period. <laughs> yes, PC, we are just awkward. <laughs> oh, it's just I like awkward. Make, I like to make things awkward as much as humanly possible. I, I take it as a game. Um, cause I like to see, I like to get as awkward, uh, I like to be as awkward as possible. And if they cry or run away or both, then I win. Okay. It, very entertaining. I mean, like at bars, it, it's so much okay. fun. I'm going to try and stay. I'm, I, I don't see me doing that during this. So, oh God, no, no, <laughs> no, no. Oh, my K's here. Hey buddy. Are you, are you aware of the genius of my K? Uh, enlighten me all over the place. He's just a huge supporter, just a really sweet guy. Um, I probably do. There's a so, lot of people to keep track of. It's a, it's a wide of net, which is great. You know? <laughs> now, you, I think, have utilized this t downtime of Corona better than almost anyone, I think, because you have taken it upon yourself to explore as much of the country as humanly possible via car. So yeah. what, tell us, tell us about some of these trips you've been taking. I'm not up for flying yet. So that is true. I am. Well, outside is open. A lot of things are closed outside is open. So uh, Susan, my new girlfriend and I, we've taken it upon ourselves that Thursdays are adventure day. Like that's where we're going to do some. And we did it today. We parked at Temesco Canyon in Malibu and biked down to, marina del rey and back on the beach bike path and you know there's people out there but you're flying right by them you get your mask on so it felt perfectly safe to us and we had a great time you know got some pizza and tacos and sat on the beach when we you know halfway through it's great it was a great day you know and it didn't require any thing odd you know, just drive park go you know yeah. since last may we visited seven national parks uh, yeah, we did uh, Joshua Tree in May, and actually at the end of July we did Yosemite, and from there till the end of the year we did six. So that was uh, Sequoia, Kings Canyon, which is the hidden gem of the state. If you've not been to Kings Canyon National Park, it is awesome. And then we took a crazy trip. You know, this was more than Adventure Thursday. This was Adventure five six days because we drove through Vegas to Red Rock. Um, then went up to Zion 
on up to Lava Springs, Lava Hot Springs, Idaho, then jumped over into the uh, uh, Grand Tetons and Yellowstone. And that trip was amazing. And I'm from the East Coast. So someone's talking about West Coast trips. Um, East Coast doesn't, do they have any? Like how many uh, national like, parks do they have? I mean, I, mean, not, I think I, like the Niagara Falls, and you know, I grew up near there. So, and this yeah. is a bunch, but the ones out here just, I mean, Yosemite is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen in my life. I got a picture of tunnel view right up there to look at every day. It's incredible. Yeah. I, uh, so. I remember one year I was out on tour with this very tiny punk band out of LA and it was March, April. So it was still like snowy ish on the East coast. And we were driving through Wyoming Um I can't remember where we were headed, but we were going from east to west and we ended up getting lost or turned around, I should say, in Yellowstone in the middle of the night while it was snowing, like just kind of like very lightly snowing. But we were driving at like 40, 50 miles an hour with a uh, with a trailer and everything. And like I was driving, everybody else was asleep in the car. I put on some Phantom of the Opera and literally there was a a. a a pack of wolves running alongside the car, like across this ravine from me. And I was like, I'm in beauty and the beast right now. (laughs) Like, like in my head, I was like, through the mist, through the wood, like (laughs) in the shadows. It's a nightmare. But yeah, I saw wolves there too. And not only did I see them, but it was twilight and they started going, the whole thing. I'm like, this is not happening. And then there's Buffalo everywhere. It's it, Yellowstone's the same. Yeah. We got turned That's around all. and started driving through a field and there were just deer everywhere. Like we could not go further. Our car, like we had to like stop because the, they weren't getting out of the way. And we were on like a dirt road and the boys woke up at one point and like our lead singer was in the front seat and he like started freaking out because he's tiny. He's like, they're going to eat me. I'm like, Oh. A welcoming party. Every park we went to, they're like the first animals we saw. They're kind of like, welcome to Zion. How you doing? Yep. Just don't ruin anything. Leave only footprints, you know, whatever. The, the, yeah. And then off they scampered and we explored from there. Yeah. I mean, I made a list of everything because it's just been insane. I mean, if it's a park, lake, beach, you know, uh, bike path, orchard, whatever around here. Uh, I mean, since like in the last seven months, I've kind of done it. Yeah. Um, it's been amazing. So if you need a place to go, just contact me. I'll tell you. There's it's, what, what are you in the mood for? Let me know and I'll tell you where to go and how to do it. Right. I mean, it's one of those things that like I, I used to go camping as a kid a lot with like my mom and like my sisters and everything. But like we haven't done that in a really long time. And I'm like kind of the same with you. I'm like, yeah. Oh, yeah. If you go to any major city, let me know where you're going. I'll tell you the <laughs> restaurant. I'll tell you the bar. I'll tell you the bartender. And uh, hopefully they're still open at this point. Um, but like getting off the beaten path i'm like that's like everything else is wilderness to me i'm like "Mm, i don't i don't know how to survive without all of that i mean i do but oh look at this long time (gasps) oh he doesn't care so not interested in the show oh my god oh well that is the cutest pup that's his attitude though he's you know sit Whatever, asshole. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but he's, he's, he, I mean, he's how old now? He's 16. He's the right to do whatever the hell he wants oh, to do. So, baby. Yeah. And his back, he's got plot butt. I don't know if you heard me describe it. So his, he'll be standing, then his ass will just go plop down to the side, and then he's sitting he, where he wasn't a moment ago. But, uh, you know, he still wobbles around the house and try and keep him going. I mean, that description could very much be used for me right now. I'm just kind of like, yeah. <laughs> Rachel's got plot butt. I've got plot butt. <laughs> it just, nothing's changing. Um, PC just put in, said, me and my BFF are so different, but we finally clicked over 500 miles. In some movie, she made me watch Bachelorette Party. Oh, my God. It's so much fun. Uh, she made me watch a little bit of Heaven, too, because, come on, <laughs> Gail Garcia Bernal. Yeah. A little bit of heaven's fun. So is Batch. Wait, Bachelorette Party. Oh, that was the one with uh, Scarlett Johansson, me. right? I think. Uh, I don't know. Is it the one where somebody dies? Down in Miami, yeah. Like they're like they're they're stripper that they like hire. Girl, like, girls trip. Like, yeah, girls yeah, trip was fun. That's the one that wasn't. 
<laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> Girl Strip was great. And then they were like, oh, we can make a white version. And they're like, <laughs> somebody had to die. Oh. Yeah, I think there's yeah, I think their stripper like ends up hitting his head on like the fireplace or something, you know? Something so white. Oh, my K wants <laughs> my K wants to know. Uh since you grew up in New York, are you much of a skier? No, actually. I've done it a handful of times. You know, Karen grew up near Cockane Ski Resort uh, out in western New York and went there a lot more than I ever did. I grew up closer to Deer Run, but only a handful of times have I been in my life. I like it, so I haven't done it much. And I think since I've been in L.A., I've only done it once out of Mountain High. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Mountain High. I've worked concerts up there. It was very weird. <laughs> They're like, pack warm. I'm like, of course, it's a ski resort. Like... <laughs> Like, do you want me to bring blankets for the speakers? Because they're going to freeze. It's January. Um, they didn't think that was funny. But then they no, I'm, not, I'm not that good either. I'm a buddy slope guy. One, of, I got on one path that was too much for me. And at the very end of it, I had one last thing, you know, section to go down. But it was really steep. So I was like, okay, I'm going to take this, you know, the sideways back and forth thing. So I took it sideways. I just couldn't get my skis to turn. And Karen just kind of watched me go really slow into a fence. <laughs> so, <laughs> so one of those orange fences, you know? And uh, yeah, I couldn't. I was like, I can't stop this from happening. You know? Yeah. I, used to, I was a really good skier growing up. Like we used to go up to, you know, Tahoe all the time. I was always super competitive. Like I wanted, like, I think it was like nine and going down black diamonds. Um, you know, cause as a kid, you're, wow. you're, you're immortal and uh, bones heal fast. <laughs> yeah. um, and uh, ever since then, like, it's, uh, like after after high school, I think like my knees just started getting worse and worse and worse. So now I'm very much a uh, I'm very much a ski bunny. I'm a I'm a lodge I'm a lodge lounge or was it Lo lounge lizard? Uh, whether at the top or the bottom of the run, I will ride up in the gondola with you, and I will stay at the top in that like nice little resort they have up there with the restaurants and the fireplace and the hot toddies i'll be up there or i'll be at the same place down at the bottom of the mountain that's um, why i do most things you know yeah plus yeah. it's pretty why not like i'll go i'll go uh i'll go sledding i love that as long as there's a toe to bring me up <laughs> <laughs> they had we just went up to mount baldy in all of our crazy oh, adventures man. and uh i gotta go back now because uh they're lift was only available on the weekends but that's an insane lift you get you drive up to it and then you just see it kind of go through the mountains and trees and then into disappears into like mm -hmm. the clouds I'm like oh, where does that go i gotta go check it out so i want to do that at some point yeah there's there's a place um outside of tahoe where do they have it oh squaw valley has this like nine mile run it's like a, a mediocre difficulty i think it's like a it's not a blue diamond. I think it's like a, it's like blue or green or whatever it is. Um, and it's a nine mile run from the top of the mountain all the way down. And it's not difficult. There's a few parts that are kind of like a little bit steeper than the others, but it's like the best run I've ever gone on. It's just it takes you like an hour or so. If you really want to, to get all the way down, you just coast down. But they compete there, right? Like Squaw Valley is no joke. Isn't it like a, Oh yeah, that's no the place where the the pros go and compete. Yeah, they've got they, that's where the Olympics were held. Um, and yeah, they've got some runs that are are legit, no joke. That I actually got lost on one time and ended up catching. I ended up accidentally going down moguls, and the tip of my ski, <laughs> the tip of my ski, I was like trying really slow to go around them, um, and not go over the moguls because I was like twelve or thirteen. Um, and I ended up going too fast and I tried to turn too fast and the tip of my ski got caught in the top of a mogul. And I literally like, thank God there was a lift right next to me, but they saw me flip ass over tea kettle and I slammed my ankle on the top of a frozen mogul and like sprained it. It wasn't broken, but it was almost fractured. Um, and so I was just laying there and like the people in the chairlift like saw me, they're like, are you okay? And I'm like, yeah, can you call someone? Have you ever uh, done the uh, snowboarding? Oh yeah, yeah. I watch. I get on those lifts, right, and I just watch them fall down. I go. I take the whole lift. I'm just watching. I go, but they're just falling down. 
Okay, is that fun? I mean, it's it's it takes you a while to recalibrate your center of gravity because not a lot of people are used to like a lot of people are used to like like skiing, like your feet are straight ahead, you're going in the direction that you're looking, but with snowboarding, you have to turn your top and re like and put pressure into your left leg, like into your back leg to turn and into your heels to go a different way. And so like people aren't used to recalibrating themselves or having having their direction go in a certain way versus their it's 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 a lot for people to readjust to but once you do it is so much fun plus there's just something fun in failure so like every time you you know fall over and get a face full of snow it's it's hilarious and your friends get well, laugh at you yeah. laugh at yourself, so it's not unlike skateboarding i watch guys skateboard and they're mostly falling down too so oh, yeah but that really hurts i would much rather fall snowboarding that's, that's what yeah the first thing i thought of when you said that <laughs> that's yeah, i would try that first then yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely try snowboarding first. I mean, your feet are glued to the board, so you don't get to like get the rhythm of kicking and pushing. But like, it's it it's much easier if you fall on snow <laughs> than if you fall on concrete because concrete doesn't care. You mentioned Tahoe; that was on our list of places to go. I wanted to go in December, but I got scared about uh, off by some people saying you need chains. Uh, on your car and then it's the best places to go. You're, you're going to be tough weather to get there and you need a truck and all this. So I never pulled the trigger on it, but I'd still like to go back. No, my mom goes up and my mom loves Tahoe and she goes up in her Prius like all the time. <laughs> all right. Well, so, yeah. So I mean, she, she, she has, she has chains cause she does go up so often that she like has a set for herself, but you can like rent chains for like, I think like 10 bucks through AAA. So okay. Yeah, it's 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 not bad. It's 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 a really nice drive too, um, and I don't think they've gotten a lot of snow recently because it's been a pretty it's been a pretty dry winter up here because I'm in San Jose. Are you and, in San Jose right now? Yeah, I moved. Yeah. I moved back in with mom. Oh, yeah. Here's me not being with somebody. <laughs> so, what is that stuff in the background? Is that your old stuff or is that? Oh, this is all my stuff. So that is one of three movie towers. And then my albums are right there. Uh, and then I've got comic books in the closet and clothes and a whole shit ton. Yeah, I moved everything up. That's probably the majority of your moving fees. <laughs> DVDs and albums and comic books. It was definitely, well, it was definitely like I had like 15 boxes of Blu-rays between now, the blue, like TVs and movies, yeah. Once you get vaxxed up, you're gonna come back here, or oh, something? absolutely, okay, yeah, as soon as humanly possible. But it's also like the fact that you know I haven't been, I haven't had a job all year because uh, mm -hmm. my last job was the John Leguizamo tour, um, and I've been getting yelled at from California, New York, and New Jersey about who is actually supposed to pay my unemployment, and so I haven't gotten any unemployment. Oh, but when it comes in, whoo. Yeah, when it gonna. well, eventually it should, but it's I'm I'm going on 13 months now, so Jeez. yeah, it's 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 been literally been 13 months and a day since the last day I worked, um, and I'm going fucking nuts. Um, <laughs> but I did I did have an interview uh this week, so fingers crossed that that comes through because that would be amazing. You gonna virtually sell merch for some virtual show? <laughs> I would love that. I could just put people on mute and be like, this is what you're getting. Give me. <laughs> um, it would be so, oh God, that would be such the dream. Um, you don't have my size. Listen, lady. Yeah. <laughs> like, no, sir, you need an XL, not a medium. Trust me. <laughs> How dare. It's okay. All you have to say are the magic words. It'll make you look thin. <laughs> it's it's black. It'll make you look thin. It'll make you look better because when you wear because when you wear things that are too small for you or too big for you, it makes you look awful. So this is gonna fit you and make you look smaller than wearing the small because you're not a small. People don't understand this. I'm actually I'm, it's actually been like the most uh uh freeing thing about the whole pandemic is that like I would go into stores and see like. Like I would go like walk into a mall or something, you know, you have to usually walk through like JC Penney's or Sears or something like that. And I would see these women like with these clothes, like shopping for themselves. And I've literally walked up to some, some women and like 
taken the dress out of their hand and put it back on the rack <laughs> and given them the proper size. And I'm like, look, I know it's two sizes bigger than the one that you just got, but trust me, this is going to fit you a whole lot better. And it's going to make you look 20 pounds lighter. I literally saw the same woman on the way out and she was like, it looks so good. I'm like, I know. <laughs> Don't pay attention to the number. Pay attention to the fit. Like, I understand this. She's like, oh, who do I, where's your manager? Who do I tell them about you? And I'm like, I don't work here. And just left. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a problem. Or like going into like Old Navy or something and like seeing like shirts unfolded. Like the merch girl in my head is like, fold them. Make the display pretty. And I don't have to do that anymore. I just outgrew Old Navy. Just happened recently. I went in that store and I went, there's nothing for me here anymore. I mean, it's, that can easily happen. No. But I... Uh, Thought you used to buy clothes there. Now I went and I'm like, what is all this shit? I can't, I'm not buying any of this. <laughs> yeah, it's it's funny. I used to I used to go in and buy like tour stuff there. And then I was like, oh, but it's too expensive for tour stuff. Cause like you just it's just gonna fall apart anyway. It gets beat to hell, it gets washed a million times. You wear it on planes, trains, automobiles, <laughs> rickshaws, like it just it's it goes everywhere, it gets disgusting, and like I don't want to feel bad about throwing it away. So I started shopping at HM. <laughs> Is that it? guys don't shop at H&M? Do guys shop at H&M? I've never yeah. been. They've okay. got a guy section. Okay. I'll check it out. And they've got a plus size section now too, which is nice because I'm going to need it much more after this pandemic. <laughs> Getting the COVID-19. Are you packing on the COVID-19? Sure. Let's stop at 19. Uh, <laughs> I'll just cap it at that. Oh, great. So snacks are, we can do snacks during the show then? Mm -hmm. Great. Absolutely. Oh. Yeah, we don't we don't we don't body shame or eat shame or drink shame. It's fine. This is a this is a safe place. I can only make fun of you for your musical taste. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> it it was it wasn't a bit, Chris. <laughs> this is how Rachel actually acts out in public. This is not a bit. This is hundred percent me. <laughs> Which I, I think you've gotten that since day one because we met your very first your very first match. You were, I was I was your your we, we played against each other for your first match. You beat us. You beat us. The movie guys didn't win. We didn't win. Yeah, but then so we you had to be memorable beat. other ways. So it's fine. We're fine. You and I are one and one. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah. In the different uh, different categories, yeah. Yeah. Division. It's fine. Yeah. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, but if I just, it's it any other way, uh, neither of us would want to talk to the other. But because we're even, we can be on the show together. Yeah, for sure. It's the only yeah. way. Yeah, <laughs> I remember. Uh, right, like like five or so, five or ten minutes before uh, we were going to go into the studio for our match, uh, Christian came, had come up to me and was like, "What are you doing?" I'm like, "What are you talking about?" And he goes, "Why are you studying with them? Like they're like." They're the people that you're playing against. Like you want to beat them. And I'm like, how do you know I wasn't studying them? Because you and I and Adam sat down at the couches and we started studying like an hour and a half before our match. And we just started busting balls. <laughs> and like Christian was like, Christian was like a little disappointed in me. He's like, what are you doing? Like you're, you're blowing this. Like you need to win. And I was like, we'll be fine. <laughs> Squeak by. But like, <laughs> It was just, I was like, I was like, well, yeah, it's it's fine. Like we're friends now. It's Wait, who was your uh, your teammate then? That was Devin Stewart. Devin, right? What happened to Devin? Um, he started booking acting gigs, and yeah, bye, bye, bye. I know, right? Well, did, did David Del Rio still performs in the schmo down? Um, he can do both occasionally. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, to be fair, Devin also has like a, I think his son is now three or four, so like, oh wow. Yeah, he's adult. He's home now all the time because there's no daycare. So you know, <laughs> I mean, it would be fun, but I don't, I don't, I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> I think that we'd be an incredibly well-rounded team. No, we have to break this one in one tie, so we can't uh, team up. But we have to, we have to do it in like Star Wars or IG, because. Uh -huh. I think we saw, I think we watched my comic book movies <laughs> spin in the match against zipper. This is the, this is the stuff I'm looking at over the, uh, over the break. Well, I mean, cause, cause I, I beat you in teams. You beat me in singles. So now we need like a massive, like we need a different category for the tiebreaker. <laughs> it won't be Disney either. 
So. <laughs> Darn, I show my Pixar. cards early. <laughs> Pixar. The worst part is I pick, I put Pixar on the wheel against Zip, and then my five, and it didn't spin it, my, but my five pointer was a Pixar question I got wrong. What was that question again? Well, I could tell you who scored every movie, mm -hmm. but then they said how many were scored by Giacchino. I said Ooh. six. It was seven. I forgot Ratatouille. Yeah. The weird part is I remembered the Cars movie that Randy Newman didn't score. Yes. Which Giacchino did. So I think it was two, right? So um, then I forgot Ratatouille. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, I think I think one of the main reasons why we were cast as like one of the main heel teams of the season was because I slammed my hand down against the real rejects during their five pointer. It was Disney. It was like, what is uh, uh, Chef Gusto's motto? And they got it wrong. And I That's a five pointer. Yeah. Good lord. Well, I mean, to be fair, like the five pointers with Disney, I'm like, that's a one pointer because I'm a freak. Um, <laughs> Like, like the the they also gave uh, Ethan Irwin said like name the three darling children from Peter Pan. I'm like, are you? That's are a five pointer. It's not a five pointer. Yeah, Wait a minute, Wendy and the other ones. It's Wendy, Michael, and John. Sure. Like the movie's been around for 60, 70 years. Like seriously. So you just why we're not doing the Disney uh, match. Well, I mean, Christian all but said that there might be a Disney match next season. He he asked if I was willing to defend, and I'm like, bring it. That would be amazing. I would love to. What uh what 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 uh what Iron Man match do you think that you would just like destroy everyone in? I think anyone who watches my matches knows that I've got a thing for directors. Yeah, I think I would I mean I don't mind putting that out there as like, oh, you want to keep your strength secret. You watch my matches. I'm always putting it on the wheel. So, yeah, uh, I would love a direct. I would love that. I would go. And, and you know what? They almost played on backstage the other day. Um, the the game, and they didn't end up playing. They ended up playing like a regular match with Bibbs and and the yeah. Barbarian. Yeah. No, they did, play, they did play it at the end. Oh, they did the game where you mention an actor, and then you mention movies that actor was in until you run out. Yeah. I would crush at that game. I was so I was, I didn't I didn't stick around to the very end. I guess I had to leave. Uh, the, and uh, they were playing the other game. I, was like, I wanted to play the other game because I wanted to play along, see if I could beat them. Yeah. Um, yeah. That game I would go. I could go until the other player has to sleep because it's gone on for so long. Yeah, I love I love those type of matches. They had them go on uh, the Tom Cruise uh, filmography. Mm hmm. And they. If you can get those '70s movies and well, '80s movies, the Barbarian, the Barbarian lost, but they didn't name like I was sitting there and I was like, "Interview with the Vampire," "Interview with the Vampire," like I was like screaming it. I was like, "What is going on?" I'm like, maybe it wasn't the sexual awakening for him like it was for me. It's ah. fine. <laughs> Let's see, put two of the hottest guys together and have them be undead. Good lord. I mean, to be fair, four. Got. Tom Cruise, okay, Antonio Banderas, Brad Pitt, Antonio Banderas, and Christian Slater. Okay, so not Stephen Ray. <laughs> I mean, given the right time. Uh, <laughs> no, I love that movie. Actually, a friend of mine had auditioned for uh, for the the role that uh, oh god, what was her name? Uh, the Kirsten Dunst got, uh, and she was like, it was literally done Kirsten Dunst and my friend. And they went with Kirsten Dunst. And like my my friend whose name is also Rachel has like naturally curly red hair. So like the fact that she made her wear a wig in the movie, she was like, remember when it came out and they were like, she was like, I was so pissed. <laughs> I, could, I didn't even need the wig. And I was like, I know, sweetie, I know it's okay. Yeah, dude, they didn't even name Cocktail. Cocktail is one of the best Tom Cruise movies, well, the great, in my opinion. The great thing about Cruise in the 80s was he would do a dopey uh popular movie like cocktail but then he'd couple it in the same year almost with something quote unquote prestigious yeah. so once you know all those you just go through i mean you just do like top gun color of money uh cocktail rain man you know and then days of thunder born on the fourth of july like every we trade off and it was a great career move because he'd be like this biggest guy in the world and he'd sneak around and get some oscar nominations and that went on for a while and you know, into a few good men and 
uh, yeah, if you got all, and it, I would name probably those movies first because they're just back to back, easy to remember. And they didn't say cocktail. They didn't say cocktail. Shame. I know. Right? Shame. A shimmy, shimmy, shame. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't. I can't remember if they named. Uh, uh, not Talladega Nights. Sorry, I was literally like gazing off into nowhere, and then Talladega Nights. Like I have Thunder? DVDs like right here. Uh, they I don't I can't remember if they said Tropic Thunder or not. Um, but like oh. that's that's probably like one of my f like I remember going to see that movie and instantly like as soon as he popped on screen I was like that's fucking Tom Cruise. My friends were like no it's not. I'm like that's fucking Tom Cruise. <laughs> like trust and me. And he's Tom Cruise as fuck in that movie. <laughs> Yeah, you got to go uh, Endless Love, Taps, all the right moves. You got to get the early ones, Outsiders. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, then you can get into the big ones. And then don't forget your Lions for Lambs, kids. Oh, I wish I saw that match. I would have been angry, probably. <laughs> you you would have been livid. Because I was sitting <laughs> there and I was like, I have three more lined up. Like, And I'm not I'm, I'm, I'm not a Barbarian. I'm not a Bibiani. Like, I could have won that. Well, no, maybe. I just would have put up a better fight. Or more of a fight. Yes, Barbarian, that's a challenge. Um... Okay, see, so you're not a barbarian. We've only seen a year of barbarian. I don't know if you know what barbarian is all about yet. That's true. I'd like to see you take them on. Be fun. Yeah, it would be very interesting. I Can I just comment on uh, something I saw Chris post? Tom yeah. Cruise was great in Rock of Ages. That is so true. Now, I know <sighs> there are people who see the stage production and find it different or whatever, but. That movie is terrible. Oh, it's god awful. But Tom Cruise is so much fun. I loved his his scenes. I loved his performance. I I I don't know if I'd watch it again, but it made that watching it great. He is the perfect Stacy Jacks, and that movie is one of the worst <laughs> that has terrible. ever been created. Um, but it's also one of like the funnest because it's so bad that it's fun to watch that like dumpster fire style of movie I think like yeah. for me anyways I'm like I know this is bad like some of my favorite movies are like the worst movies I don't I don't have that anymore I can't I used to like go see snakes on a plane it's so bad it's good I watched it I'm just like I'm just having a miserable time and I hate my fucking life can we be done with it like it doesn't work on me anymore I wish it did because there's so many bad movies out there to have fun with I mean you got to be special breed like i want to see cats in the theater i still haven't but i got to go to the theater where they've turned it into the room and people are yelling and screaming and throwing shit and i just want to see it like that yeah you know J I I went at to home i wouldn't watch it it's so bad it's good at home i would just be miserable and i know it yeah no no janine and i went to go see she was staying with me one weekend when she came down for a match and she we decided that we were going to pop an edible and go see cats <laughs> it didn't make it better <laughs> um, I thought it was going to make it far more enjoyable. And we spent the whole, I spent the whole time being distracted for the fact that like some cats were wearing shoes and the other cats weren't. And then like it's cats. So it's just fucking confusing. And I'm like, I don't see the point of this. Like I'm a theater kid, but like, I never like wanted to ever see cats like ever. Yeah. I'm a dog person. Alec Baldwin. You know what? Alec Baldwin did a better job in Rock of Ages than Pierce Brosnan did in Mamma Mia. Wow, Alec Baldwin is in Rock of Ages? How have I forgotten that? Yeah, well, he, I can tell you why. It's he, a terrible plays movie. The, uh, he plays the club owner. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. He plays he 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 he's or he runs it. He the the bar that uh uh da, uh Huff and uh what's his face work at? Or what is his face? Part? Huh? Do we know what is his face? We don't I know don't his know. face. Yeah, what, nobody knows. What is, what is it? I mean, it's skin and tendon and muscle and cartilage. Jin, Julian Huff and the, the guy. That I don't guy. Know. Who's that guy, guys? I don't know. I know. There, I probably, there, know. probably a five-pointer. <laughs> Who was the lead in the Footloose remake? That's beyond a five-pointer. If PJ writes that question, he knows I would just be like just staring him down like, just be like what, what is wrong with you? Like they're all Ansel Elgort, I guess, until I'm told otherwise. <laughs> well, not until West Side Story comes out. Yeah, which it, I mean, should I be. <laughs> I mean, I'm still hoping that once, because once uh, in was it in the Heights 
was pushed back. It was pushed back to Christmas. And I was like, oh my God, I get the most amazing musical double feature in a movie theater with In the Heights and West Side Story. I was mm. so excited. And then they both got pushed and I'm just praying. I know they're not going to, they're going to stagger them because you can't have two movies like that open together. But I just want the option of seeing them both in the theater on the same day. Like I just, I, I need it. My theater heart needs it. I can't go to New York. Like they're not going to be opening Broadway anytime soon. Like, please just give this to me. Theater gods. I just need it. He's back. <gasps> kind of. Wait, there he is. Oh, no, not over the. No, he's no, okay. He's sixteen. We didn't. We didn't. We didn't. <laughs> his writer. I get it. It's fine. I didn't send over the milk bones like I thought I was going to. Yeah, he's protesting your show. He's <laughs> not a fan. Well, I mean, it's been a while since I've been able to give him belly rubs, so I get it. Hey, That's a new thing I, now. He'll just. I, am, uh, I I love the MTS writers. They are amazing. But that is. That's a crap question. Please don't write that question. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Who is the guy from Footloose Remake? Speaking of Julianne Hook. Kenny Warmel. Thank you. Also, if you've got served fame. Oh, yeah. Kenny Warmold. You got served. <laughs> I forgot that was a movie. It's one of those things of like, once a question gets asked about that in dance, I'm like, oh, yeah, that was a movie. <laughs> so bad i do love those dance movies though they they're they're those are some of the best like they're so bad they're good movies like honey the movie is trash oh my god jessica alba is the worst in it but it's <laughs> so much fun to watch as an ex-dancer i'm like your toes weren't pointed like girl come on you can't pull a triple with that like <laughs> just sitting there silently judging stuffing my face with popcorn in the theater my mom thinks i'm bitter it's fine uh <laughs> Although I should see those. Which step up is which? I mean, I got to figure that out for the, yeah. the schmodown. My case said, as I was doing research for a podcast, it just hit me that we're getting four Manuel Miranda projects this year, two animated movies, Vivo and Cantado. And yeah, a Netflix adaptation of Tick, 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 Boom. It's going to be so amazing. Uh, and of course, in the Heights. Yeah, that's, I mean, 2021 is going to be the year of Lin Manuel, which I'm totally fine to turn out like we get biden in six days and we get lemon while all year long like i it's 2021 is already a much better year than december was um because <laughs> december was like three years altogether i think well the uh yeah we had domestic terrorists storm the capital and thirty thousand people have died of covid but other than that yeah the year is much better yeah <laughs> i mean <laughs> you you've seen that uh somebody created the uh the ant-man uh memes like you know when uh Luis goes to pick up uh paul rudd's character from jail and like as they're driving back he's like telling him everything that's happened while he was in jail oh and, yeah yeah like, adapted like the screenshots to him telling paul rudd about everything that happened in 2020 <laughs> and it's like almost 300 memes like back to back and they're like you're like, oh yeah, and then Australia almost burned down and blah blah blah. And he goes, Well, everything's fine, right? It's like, ah, there's a lot of animals that are still on the endangered list now, and blah blah blah. And then it's like, oh, we're not even done with May, like, or we're not even done with January. Like it's like the fast May. version of uh Death to 2020 on Netflix. I don't know if you saw that, but that was pretty fun. I, I didn't saw, see saw most of it. I didn't see the, the Netflix one, I saw the Amazon one, which was hilarious. The one with all the female comics that came together. Hmm. Oh, it's so the Netflix cool. one, they got some good names there. They got Sam Jackson, Hugh Grant, some other people to play fake, you know, pundits to talk about the year. <laughs> and it was a shit year. It was. Hopefully this year will be better. Yes, I was. Yeah, point your toes. No biscuits. Guys, come on. I was a dancer for all through high school, took dance classes, childhoods, like just point your toes when you dance just please dear god like there's nothing that literally will take me out of a movie more than like a can facing the wrong way like i'm very detail oriented about like stuff that happens in movies so like if a can is like if a can of sprite is facing one facing one way in one shot and then they cut away and they come back and it's facing a different way i'm like mm, continuity um and yeah if you're dancing or doing anything technical like do it right <laughs> 
Like yeah, Karen uh, always had a gripe with Country Strong with Gwyneth Paltrow. Just watching her fingers on the fret of the guitar going, oh, honey, just just stop. Stop pretending. <laughs> I, I, to this day, can't watch Bring It On without people, without, with people that were not cheerleaders in high school. Okay, you know something? I think that the Schmodown has a boner for Clueless, Mean Girls, and Bring It On. I would sit there and watch matches, and those movies came up all the time. So during uh, this break, I watched Mean Girls for the first time. I watched Clueless for the first time. I still have to watch Bring It On. But uh, I'll tell you this. Clueless was great. I don't know. I slept on that one clearly for 20 years or whatever. But uh, uh, I, I mean, I can't believe how much these movies would come up in Schmodown questions and you know what well, day of the week do they do this and then and then so we were now I'm, up, I'm caught up good I, I, well you're almost caught up you still need to watch bring it on i do but like i would literally be watching it and be like they can't do that they're a high school team that that stunt is illegal for high school teams you have to be a college team to do that like i was like who approved this in my head i'm just like I'm like what consultant did they did, did they talk to like this is bullshit this is like they, they get eliminated and it just I, I ruin it. But then there's little like nuggets in that movie that I'm like, this is 100% accurate. Snuggle popper. Hey, babe. Look at the boy. Hey, did you, oh, big yawn. Big, so tired from doing a busy day full of what was it again you were doing? He was He's plopping. Plop budding. Yeah. Plop -butting. Plop around the house. Uh, it takes a lot to continually plot, but because then you have to like lift up and transfer and like, yeah. it takes a lot Do lift, butt, <laughs> lift hind legs, stretch, yawn. It takes a lot of muscles. That's I like an think, entire full body workout. I don't think he just wants some of the chips. So. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, Marvin, such a good boy. I can't believe you had him for 16 years. That's that's amazing. I've had him for 10. Oh. He used to live up in the Bay Area. Oh, he, he used to. A, a rescue system that his owner was moving back to Asia and you couldn't bring dogs in. So she just had to give them up. And then the place, uh, they've got these little underground railroads, you know, where like, okay, there's people interested in him down in the valley. So we got to get him from Sacramento. Put, put him on the, the truck and they take him down, you know, with a bunch of other dogs and take him to a pet smart, try and get him a place. So. <laughs> That's where we found him in yeah, 10 years. Oh, well, I, I'm so sorry, PC, that I'm just getting this to this now, but I just saw that you posted again. She said, okay, last one, hoping to sleep soon, but this has been great. Paul, I'm not only a den, a den shill, um, LOL, but I do enjoy your quarantine Twitter updates and your lady. Thank you for being you. Oh, it sucks. Thank you. Thanks. Donate. Thank you. <laughs> I have fun here. That was the thing. That was the thing Adam and I always uh, said about movie guests. Ah, we have fun here. I mean, it's the only reason why I do the show is because it's fun. Like, there are literally days during this quarantine where I was like, I know it's Thursday, but I really don't want to do this right now. Like, I'm just depression, anxiety, whatever, just like not literally cannot getting, like, not being able to get out of bed. And then, like, an hour before the show, just like rolling out of bed, taking a quick shower and like doing this. And instantly you feel better because you're reconnecting with people you're talking. And it's so much fun. We just end up laughing our asses off on, on this show. So it's like, it's so nice just to like have it as like a break. So uh, you guys have started up doing uh, interviews again, right? On the movie guys. Yeah. I had not uh, done one since February. It turns out through no choice. I wasn't like, I'm taking off. It just, lockdown you know yeah. i just hadn't been doing it and yeah i've done back to doing something called the tmg interview the movie guys um our take on the tmz i guess <laughs> uh trying to take those letters back uh yeah and so i've been interviewing you know i'm not gonna get to call matt damon and have him come on my show but uh, there's folks who putting out indie movies who i love talking to and the indie film stories from the trenches are the best i love that so i want to talk to him like <clears throat> where did you have to make concessions what happened what was this challenge how did you work around this and i love those those stories so i got a bunch of them coming from the bunker um talk to clay tweel clay directed the great 
documentary Finders Keepers, which if you haven't seen it, you must. I'll give you the sell on it because once you get the sell, you will find it and you will watch it. I think it's streaming on Amazon Prime. He was in my garage when we did the old show in person uh, and he was directing a new project, which I'll mention in a second. But Finders Keepers is about a guy who buys a grill, a used grill down in one of the Carolinas, North or South Carolina, and he finds inside it a human foot. So he does what you do. He starts a little roadside attraction where you can pay like 50 cents or whatever to come and see the human foot. Then a guy comes out of the woodwork and says, hey, that's my foot. And the first guy says, finders keepers. There's your movie. <laughs> and it's a documentary. So it is a fantastic documentary. So Clay was directing something new. So I said, well, you got to come talk to me because I loved your first movie. And lo and behold, he directed uh, a couple. He directed Gleason in between Finders Keepers, and then if you ever saw that doc about the athlete with ALS, it got a ton of praise, oh, and it yeah. got him. And he just kept putting out good work, and now he got a gig directing the four part series on HBO Max, um, Heaven's Gate, the Cult of Cults, all about the Heaven's Gate cult that went to follow the comet, and mm -hmm. it's uh, yep. <laughs> they're 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 more. Um, complex story than I thought. You know, you watch the first two episodes of the long setup. They're like, oh, this has been going on for 20 years. I thought the guys saw the comic, got a crazy idea and did a thing. But no, it's been a cult for a long time. And then the last two episodes are the punch, you know, so it's a good two hour setup and two hours of punch. And it's a, that was a great talk. So I got to talk to him about that. And I got to talk to uh, Alicia Witt, lovely actress, Alicia Witt. So or whatever, Orange is the New Black, Walking Dead. I mean, she was in freaking Dune and Twin Peaks. I mean, she's been doing it forever. And she has a new um, uh, romantic comedy out based on Jane Austen's Persuasion. And there's uh, another interview with Jeremy Sklar that I just put out. That's uh, He directed a movie called Tom of Your Life, streaming on Amazon. That's okay. about a baby who is born and ages four years every hour and so the nurse is like i gotta take you and show you life i can't have them be poked and prodded by you know, so he's a filmmaker who made this i had him on the show blaine weaver was on the show he made a horror film called getaway he's been in a bunch of indie films and a uh, big fan of his and then i just uh, had an interview with um james maslow and if you ever saw the the boy band big time rush he was in he was in big time rush and he put out a romantic comedy as well. So that's the long way to, but I had to give the big plug for finders keepers. Cause I love that doc. Um, as, as somebody who grew up in like the heyday of boy bands, anytime anybody's ever like, Oh, boy band, big time rush. I'm like, it's not a boy band. Uh, <laughs> Watch their videos. They're, they're doing girl. I oh yeah. The broom with the damn up. It's all that crap. Yeah. Um, but uh, not my thing, but videos either. So, but he finds himself in movies and then I care. So uh, he made a, a romantic comedy called stars fell in Alabama. So that I, I'm going to cut together and that will be put up tomorrow. So I'm glad we're doing this Perfect. so I can plug it. And over the weekend, the audio and video of that interview will be up. So I'm doing those regularly again. Um, yeah. I think they're going to be a good calling card to, to, you know, keep getting more and more high profile people to interview. And, and, uh, once we get back into theaters, you know, more and more premieres to host and because I've done a bunch of those, but I want to do more. I love it. Yeah. You're a great MC. Uh, <laughs> you just have that, like you have the voice, you have the, the energy for it. Like you just, you're just made for it. Thank you. Um, yeah. I, uh, shoot. There was something I was going to say. Oh, somebody, uh, wait, what? Oh yeah. She is in two weeks notice. Uh, she's also in supernatural, which is where I got to meet Alicia Witt um, at a convention in Nashville a few years ago. I know she's in a hundred billion movies and I like her in so the good. upside of anger. She's where, oh, I yeah. forgot she was in that. Yeah. Wow. All of those. <laughs> um, I mean, I, considering she was in Dune, like David Lynch's Dune when she was like, eight or something. I mean, it's just yeah. been working ever since. So she's got a lot to talk about. Um, and she's a charmer. We had a great time talking. Jake, um, what? <laughs> Remember I said we go on a lot of these shows with bits. Today's yeah. just conversating. Schmobates, Adam and I went on Schmobates. And every time we were asked to debate, we would just tear into each other with 
expletives the whole time. You know, you got three minutes to debate this topic. Adam, you can suck my balls and da da da. <laughs> and I think we were talking about dick, and I said, I yield the rest of my dick. <laughs> I don't I don't even remember that, but because we were just riffing. Uh, but the plan was that's just insult each other. Make your point if you have time, but really yeah. just insult the other person and see how this go back and watch that old schmo It's fun. We yell at each other a lot. <laughs> I, I, I remember watching it and just I'm just just why? Why would why would why would Paul yield the rest of his dick on my show? Jay, <laughs> come on. <laughs> yeah, dude, uh, I'm with you. Yeah, in sync, Backstreet Boys, 98 degrees, LFO. Oh, um, I'll answer that. The nope. answer is Led Zeppelin. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. Uh, oh my god, I've been di- deep diving down uh, the rabbit hole of Facebook videos with uh, comedians, and I have come across a comedian named Steve Hofstetter, uh, who is a tall, gingerish man, um, and he has this whole thing about... Uh, um, he, he's like the best at deterring hecklers. And I'm like, I just want to see him and Ellis <laughs> together. I've seen that video. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like highlights of his. Oh yeah. Um, Takedowns like, of audience members. There's thousands of them. And I think <laughs> I've watched them all. Um, I literally like be like, I'm going to go to bed and then like Facebook, like I'll be on Facebook for a hot second just to like check and make sure that all my notifications are gone. And then it'll be like, a video of steve and i'm like okay i'll watch this one and then like three hours later i'm like oh my god it's four o'clock in the morning i should probably go to bed um but he keeps me laughing so it's fine because that's all you need to do in this time right is just keep laughing yeah i mean i we were talking at new year's eve i was on a zoom with some people and we're like how did you get through the year you know and it's like I, i don't know that i got through it i mean i answered the question i said well susan had a lot to do with it It was very healing to spend time with her and and get romantic again and go out to places and just you know not but then i realized we had had a great year i mean it it also is you know shallow to say that when so many people are suffering but um i can't say it was horrible the world was horrible but my year wasn't awful I kind of, I kind of made the most of it, and that's all you can do. And when I did that, when I committed to doing that, um, I can't. I mean, yeah, it wasn't so bad. Well, the way that I look at it is, life is like a pendulum, and it'll swing from like really, really great things to really, really bad things. And not everybody's pendulum moves at the same rate, nor at the same extremes. So, so this year, somebody could have had it. Could have been a really, really crappy last five years. And it's been leading up to this last year where you got to be super productive and a lot of great things happened for you. And it sucks that a lot of bad things happened for everybody else, but that's your pendulum. Whereas other people, it's swinging back and forth like crazy or it's or it's gone the other way and it's just stuck on bad times for now. But the pendulum does end up swinging the other way. So, yeah, I mean, I'll I'll tell you, 2019 sucked. So, (laughs) yeah, it did. um, So. (laughs) You know, for it not being that bad, I can only say 2020 was an improvement. Yeah. So there's your pendulum. It's very true. Okay, we're going on two hours, guys. So I'm going to, because I know I can stay up for hours talking. Uh, Paul's, you know, probably getting ready to go to bed. Did we get the mayhem? We've talked movies and music. I just want to make sure mayhem was covered. I mean, did you I'm have... I'm a reserved tonight. I'm not being crazy. Well, not right, powder keg like, in the house, so... Also talked about how you like traversed the, like the western half of the country during this pandemic, and how you're willy nilly just riding bikes up and down the Pacific Coast, and you know it's we've touched. I mean, have you done something that's like so outside of your expectations or walls that you're shocked that you did that this year? Well, like I said, just the overall experiences I'm having are different. Um, Karen and I, I didn't realize till this year. We're very cosmopolitan in a way. We were like movies, theaters, concerts, dinner, and now but you can't do any of that. We're doing actually what Susan loves to do, which is biking, kayaking, hiking, camping. So, uh, and I, like you, did a lot of that in my youth, so it's not foreign to me. I just haven't done it in a long time. Karen lived in the middle of nowhere. She's like, I go to my house. I don't know if I'm going to have heat. I'm not going to do that shit on purpose in a tent. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> that's... So this is different for me, but not foreign. 
uh, and I welcome it, and it's been a lot of fun. So that's the, the whole thing is kind of outside of my recent comfort zone, but not entirely weird. Yeah, so not a lot of mayhem, just a lot of more more wandering than mayhem in your life. Whereas I think I just embody mayhem at this point. <laughs> Like it's just it's just part of my DNA. San Jose mayhem. Oh, you have no idea. <laughs> there are. I did that auto show out. once, and I was very disappointed I didn't get to the uh, Winchester Mystery House. Winchester Mystery House. Yeah, no one wanted to go with me. <laughs> I mean, it's fun to go by yourself too. Like it is. It's so much fun. Yeah. They, do, they do these great. Um, every Friday the Thirteenth, they do a midnight flashlight guided tour. Um, and then I think on Halloween, you can stay the night. Um, I am not one to proverbially pr poke the bear because <laughs> it's one of the things, those things that I'm like, I don't necessarily believe in it, but I also don't not believe in it. You I don't know, want, like, I want to hedge my bets. Yeah. Like, I want to stay covered. I've watched 15 seasons of Supernatural. I know to pack my salt and my iron and everything like that, but I'm not about to go into that place and be like, ooh, guess who's got a Ouija board? No, fuck that. I know what happens. There are movies that are made about that. Just don't fucking poke the bear. Like, I like I I would never be in any of those movies because as soon as like, what was it? Um, the one where they rented the house. Uh, Truth or Dare where they rent like this super haunted house and they spend like 24 hours in it. But like the spirit like keeps them in there. As soon as I walked in and they said that this was a haunted house, I'd be like, I'm going to the hotel. See you guys later. Like, yeah. fuck you. <laughs> That's a sketch that Adam and I wrote for movie guys, which was, uh, so good. That, yeah, the, the pragmatics, the pragmatic, Mr. And Mrs. Pragmatic moved into a house. And then they were told, well, you know, that we've heard a lot of voices coming from the basement. Oh really? Well, I think we'll fill the basement with cement, move and never come back here again. And then the, doors so the car shut boom, and they're off and just one after another of those and there's your sketch so i was crying watching that because i think you, <laughs> I, I can't remember if you sent it to me or adam's i think adam sent it to me after he was on the show uh in july and i was just like he's like oh you'll love it and i like sitting there crying left and i'm like this is me this is absolutely me i'm like no we're not going to exercise. We're not going to bring anybody in. I'm not going to sage. I don't care. We're just going to fucking move. We're going to do what we can and get just, <laughs> just get out of here. Leave it, leave it all there. And we're gone. Um, yeah. I'm with Jake. January and February were pretty good of 2020. And then the rest. <laughs> you know what I really missed? I, man, I was all set to fire up that free for all in March. I know. And somebody, I think Tim Franco was on here commenting about playing with me in that horror free for all. And it did pretty well. And then Tim and I were right up to the wire going into extra innings there against Collins till he, till he cleared the table. Yeah. But um, yeah, th that, I mean, I was ready for that free for all. And they, uh, then the rest of the year didn't go well, but I was all set for that to be, my thing. I just want to do, I want to do an Iron Man match. I want to do a speed match. Like all those sort of just pile on the questions. Come I, on. That's I had such a good number for free for all. And then I got, <laughs> and I was like, motherfucker, like stop. Like who's, who's fucking sabotaging me? Like, honestly, like this is bull. I was so angry. Oh, and then I miss seeing everybody because, like, the last free for all, like, you're you're that was your very first public appearance. That was like your yeah. introduction to the to the to the the family, basically. Yeah. Um, and it was so much fun. Oh my god, I just <laughs> I remember getting very drunk on the stairwell uh, with my handle of Jameson, and then running out of Jameson because a certain ex manager of the league uh, would help himself liberally. To my bottle uh and then we ended up drinking at the bar that was just off the stage and janine would came on and i apparently was heckling her with my aggressive love <laughs> but that was such a fun night and we all went it oh god that was so so much fun yeah it lasted two rounds it was my first I match was... of any kind and it was live you know so it's like <laughs> All right, let me give it a shot. And then if they asked a Mortal Kombat question, I went, hell, I'm out. And it's funny. I was like, I wanted to come into the league and just be in something that's completely memorable and just have everyone talking about me. Well, that happened. Bibbs cleared the table and they talked about it all year. I'm like, damn it. I was on that table. I was the first one out 
I was this. So <laughs> my number originally, I had been given a different number. Um, and then when I like everybody was like supposed to respond to the email and be like, yes, I've, I'm confirming and my number is blah, blah, blah. And I got a response. Uh, and Christian was like, what? And he had accidentally sent me Rachel Cushing's number and didn't have me in the free for all. So somebody ended up backing out and I got number two instead of the number that I was supposed to get. It was just a big old cluster F. Um, and then I ended up, uh, my first five was, what was it? It was Bibiani, me, the kid, Rachel Cushing, and I want to say Whitney. Like, really? You're putting me <laughs> like, like, I just wanted to have fun and not get knocked out after the first round. I just wanted to make it one round. And then of course, Devin comes in the next round and I'm like, I know all of his questions. They ask a, they ask a, a, a Ben Affleck question. Uh, they ask a, what was it? Um, they ask a, a a Jay and Silent Bob strike back question. I'm like, what is going on? Yeah, I, I went up onto the balcony and sat there and answered all the questions for like the rest of the match. I was like, yeah. But, yeah, it was. I mean, that's what you do for for, for free for all. Uh, hopefully, we'll be able to do something amazing. Hopefully, the vaccine gets released and we can all kind of like, because I know that last year they wanted to just have the competitors. And like space us out throughout the theater and still do it live um, and broadcast it, just not like sell tickets because we can't, we weren't supposed to have people, whatever. Cause it, at that point in March, it was really, I think the, the regulations were like no gathering of like a hundred or more. Uh, and then it changed to like 50 or more. And they're like, mm -hmm. Ooh, 50, like we've got 40 competitors plus crew and Mark and Harloff. Like, I don't know if we can do this. But they were like seriously debating having us come in for the free for all and just mask it up while we're waiting. And I'm like, people are gonna just gonna be backstage getting drunk and not really caring. It's fine. <laughs> and then they they were like 15 or more. We're like, nope, out, guys. Sorry, see ya. Yeah. But hopefully something can change, and at least we might be able to do a digital version this year. Or even if, if we just do it in the summer, I just I'm fired up for that. I'm, I think I got a shot. I don't know why. I think I I. I feel good about the mult at the multiple questions i could think well at the horror one better than i thought you know how it was yeah. like it, it, our whole the whole uh faction was like who's the horror expert <laughs> anybody <laughs> well <laughs> well kate sent out that text and she was like okay who wants to do it and i'm like if no one else wants to i will step in because i have time to study and she goes great so rachel and, and i'm like fuck no <laughs> Yeah, well, that's what I did. I mean, that's what basically got. Well, listen, I I'm one of the guys who came in, like, uh, I think I described this on backstage. Rachel Cushing, when she retired, said, "Look, I came into this as like a person who's just a pundit, talks about movies all the time, has a blog or a webcast or something, and everybody does these, and we all trying to figure out who knows the most." But now it's changed. I came into the league like that as well. I'm like, my whole three and two record of my first year was me coming in going, how much do I know? But now people are changing the game because of the study. So I'm going to add study on top of what I already knew. And I think I'm going to be pretty dangerous next year. So that's the goal. Yeah, you were already terrifying. Um... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I was going, I was, I was winging it. No, I, now, I know. The that free for all that Tim you. mentioned, <laughs> the free for all that Tim mentioned, though, was, uh, was, a good example of that because I, you know, we did, I didn't know horror. I was like, I kind of know horror. I know enough, but there, there were plenty of questions I answered in that free for all because I went back to Wikipedia and looked at how many conjuring movies there were mm -hmm. or this or that, you know, there were a bunch of questions that I answered knowing that. And it's like conjuring. There's like five or six or something. He's like, Oh no, there's seven because the nun and both all the Annabelle's and then all the conjurings <laughs> and La Llorona, which people forget. So that, it's already paying off in that small microcosm of just horror. So once I hit all the major categories and uh, get my studying in by the time you know I play in whatever February or March, yeah, um, it'll be pretty fired up. So yeah, I was I was just really proud of the fact that I ended up getting more points than Riley because Riley loved <laughs> horror, and I was like, I didn't win. But also, like, how was I going to win against the people that I was up against? Because it was like Collins and Whitney and Hoyk and me, and I was like. <laughs> you're not gonna win this like awesome. mvp potential mvp and winner Thank yeah you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> i had a 
that one guy come in. Uh, he was he had like white face. He looked like almost like a skull or something. I can't remember who, who he was. was but he came in, he came in with Collins, and I was like, dude, if you just got that last question right, then he and Collins both would have had. But if he got it wrong, Collins got it right. Then he's the lowest guy. He's out, and Collins stuck around. And by you know, clearly stuck around to the end of the match. I was like, gah. <laughs> but what are you gonna do? Damn. I mean, what what could have been? What could have been is yeah, like I, I I you know I'm kind of proud that I forgot Rennie Harlan's Exorcist movie, <laughs> but now I can't take that pride anymore. I have to instead know it. I instead I have to know all these awful movies. We already hated ourselves when we did the movie guys that we had to like research and write jokes about Diary of a Wimpy Kid movies. We're like no one cares about these movies, and we were so completist that we like well we know we're going to cover every movie that comes out this weekend, and they're all bad. You know, it's like ugh. I got to go back to that frame of mind again. Because I got to yeah. know about these. There'd be questions. Yeah, I did. I did do for like, I think three or four months when I knew that there was nothing new coming out. Like I knew for a fact that like the theaters weren't going to be reopening and all of that. I did like three months of going back and looking up what movies came out that day in the past and like would try and watch as many of those as possible in that, excuse me, in that one day. Um, that was rough. That was a really rough, like three or four months. Uh, that 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 hurt a little bit because the memory it's just uh, and also with like everything going on and depression and like one day like fades into another you're like wait did I watch <laughs> that yesterday or like three months ago but I have started keeping track on my phone I'm shocked how fast time is going oh I know and I thought for sure it'd be sluggish next thing you know it's almost been a year let's see I've already watched 10 14 17. 25. I don't know. Let's see. How many how many movies have I watched already this year? Wow. Yeah. This year already? That's just this year. That's since Damn. January 1st. Wow, I thought my one a day was going pretty well. But I'm watching all new stuff, like I said, screeners and such. I mean, by the way, I'd like to throw the the title One Night in Miami out to everybody. Oh my god, um, I'm so excited for this. I've seen it twice already. It's my favorite film of the year. So uh, it's on Amazon, I think, Friday. Yeah. But, man, that movie is fantastic. Which is tomorrow. So after tomorrow's yeah. awards ceremony, uh, you can go watch it on Amazon. Yeah. Or watch it before. Because like we, like anybody has jobs these days. Well, I'll um, watch Bill Maher. See, this is the trouble I have. Well, then you can watch it before. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, it's been two hours, guys. If you have any more questions, please send them in Streamlab. We're going to probably do about five more minutes, and then I'll close with my favorite question of all time. Does Susan have anything more to add? My girlfriend's chiming in in the chat, which is fun. Oh, is she? Wait, I'm missing yeah. it. She's talking about biking with the people. Where is she? Why am I not seeing this? Oh, there you are. Hi. I can't wait to meet you one day. Yeah. I've read road bike wheels and weight mountain bike handlebars. See, just chiming in with gems like that. Also, <laughs> I mean, people are asking her. That's a response to something. She doesn't yeah. just say bike parts and, and names and things Yeah, at random. <laughs> <laughs> just like Tourette's, but not swearing. Yeah. Hi, 10 speed mountain bike. <laughs> Hi. How you doing, Suze? <laughs> Yay. We, we love people here. You can't. <laughs> I know. <laughs> She's adorable. Uh, yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be real fun. I'm I'm really excited now. What is your perfect first day after the world opens back up? So no more COVID. Everything's open. You've got a full bank account to work with. <laughs> Everyone's out and happy and healthy. What do you do? Hmm. Let's see. There's got to be. Well, I'm liking this national park streak. So maybe uh, go to one I haven't been to, like Carlsbad Caverns. Oh, it's a good. And one. then a big dinner in a restaurant, <laughs> and then a movie in a theater, and then a concert. And I'm going to put all those things in the in one day. So probably a early going to a national park, then a then a matinee movie, then dinner, then a concert. 
I want those things again. I want mo- movies and concerts again. And restaurants. I mean, I would give up going to restaurants for the rest of my life if I could just bring back movie theaters and concerts and theater and like theater. Yeah, theater too. What, what, that- what artists would you like to see first? I have Rage Against the Machine tickets. They get together every election year and play. And I was supposed to see them last May. Yes. And I was going to drive to the Bay Area to do it because the only show they were playing here was Coachella. And I don't want to go to that big mess. No, so I was going to go up to Oakland and see Rage. And then, of course, they didn't do it. But they didn't refund us. So we have tickets. And it's weird that they would play after because, again, they normally come out in the election year, say everybody sucks and you should be angrier. And then, you know, but now we've already voted and it's already in the past. But I guess they'll still do the show. And if they do, I want that show. I want to see that show. Yeah. And if yeah. I'm still up here, like, I will meet up with <laughs> because <laughs> well actually I'll I'll probably call a friend of mine and be like hey you still working for them can I uh, can I come hang out <laughs> they're incredible they just no they're amazing they so own their shit now like when they were young and angry it was great but like older wiser Tom Morello and I mean you're still gonna get Brad and Tim just going bonkers in the rhythm section and last time i saw him was 08 and zach came out and he was you know he's got like a shirt and slacks now and he's uh uh sharp and they're still angry as hell but it just seems you know, something mature about their show now that i really really love and i want to see it again yeah it's less let's slam our bodies into brick walls and more like i'm gonna talk to you about the most important things in life and tell you how stupid you are while screaming in your face yeah uh, i want you to bounce around and Pit, pit out, you know? Yeah. But, but gentle because <laughs> nobody has health insurance and we're all brittle at this point. Um, <laughs> oh, are you so excited to meet you too? Yay! Susan! <laughs> uh, okay. So we have one more stream labs. Um, PC wants uh, us to tell a love story, please. Um, my life is a dumpster fire when it comes to that aspect of it. Um... I have gotten to reconnect with a very dear old friend of mine. Uh, We've known each other since we were about 17 or 18. And funny enough, we have the same birthday, same year, same day. Uh, Mm -hmm. We met our senior year of high school uh, and we've been friends ever since. Uh, I actually got to go over to his house for Christmas and uh, we watched, uh, we watched Wonder Woman and, uh, he showed me this great, like, old school wrestling card game that's like, like WW, w, like WCW meets like D and D. It's like everybody's got like these, like you have to have certain amount of strength in order to like put on certain moves. It looks fucking fantastic, and I'm so excited to go over and get high with him and like just play this game with him and his <laughs> roommate. It's gonna be amazing. They're incredible. At, like they're they're also like me, just hermits and social distancing, and like doesn't see anybody. Um, so we're very safe about it, but, um, I mean, friendship love is as pure as it gets with me, I guess. This is as close as it gets. Um, Paul's got a much better love story than I do. I've got a handful, you know, of people I've been in love with in my life. And, uh, you know, the, the current one's a fun story to tell because, you know, if you're thinking that, that quarantine dating can't happen, I mean, Susan and I did it, but we were, in, I didn't want to get on a fucking app. I'm like, I'm not an asshole. Apologies for all of you who are on an app, but I would have felt like a douche. So I said, just somebody introduced me to somebody. And so people were introducing me and I went out on a date or two, went out with a doctor, went out with a lawyer. It seems like a great idea, but not that interesting. I needed someone more artistic. So um, Susan's worked at Universal Theme Park uh, for 10 years and I've never met her. I've been there since 03, but I've never cross paths from both in performance. So uh, we had a mutual friend introduce us and that went well. We did a walk socially distance on the Chandler bike path. Mm-hmm. Next day, we did a socially distance walk in the Chandler bike path that ended in a little picnic, Pinocchio in Magnolia, if you've ever had their Italian. And then the third one was her adorable idea. We went to uh, Neptune's Net in Malibu, the, the seafood place in separate cars each got a meal, right? Then drove up around the back of the place on a side street, back the cars up next to each other, popped the trunks. We each sat in each other's trunk, ate the food and had a little socially distanced picnic. Adorable. 
Cool. So, uh, and then, you know, yeah, after a while, there's just, we stopped distancing. We finally got to know each other, realized how we were quarantining separately and felt safe. And then next thing you know, boop, dating. So, and then we kissed her. And then we couldn't stop. Then we kissed. Gross. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, it can happen. <laughs> well, I mean, video drew. First of all, welcome. Hi, sweet pea. Uh, quarantine love story is my middle name. I mean, do you have a middle name? I thought you were one word. How can you have a middle name? I think it's like a proverbial celestial middle name. Video quarantine love story, Drew. That's a great like that. That, that is a Coachella name, a hundred percent. Second stage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And basically, um, well, those are great stories. Um, I'm very jealous and not bitter and happy at all. <laughs> and Karen and I was was a, um, you know, we liked each other and we'd called each other over a summer and got back to college together. And I was going to a theme park and she was not. She had a rehearsal or something. So I'm like, I'm going to buy her a bear. So I bought her a teddy bear. And then she ended up going on a date with another guy. That guy drops her off. I show up with the bear. I'm like, bye, guy. I took her to a pig roast. Not the, you know. I gave her the bear and then we started dating. But the thing about the bear was I didn't win the bear at the I, I played a little game where you just shoot a you put a ball at the end of a gun, you shoot it with a little pressurized air, and it knocks over three things, and then you win a prize. And I kept doing it and I kept doing it. And I kept doing it, and it never happened. I'm like, I gotta get the bear. And I kept and then like, like a crowd gathers, like, can he do it? I'm like, yeah, I get it. And so finally I said, look, how much did this buy the bear? I, can I just buy it? I'm not winning this game. And He's the like, guy's like, well, you can't. <laughs> What's that? He's like, you hit it 10 minutes ago. <laughs> yeah. He's like, I'll set the things up. Like if a fly landed on them, they'd fall over. You know, so then I'm like, Pa-bam! and knocked him over and won the thing because I gave the guy an extra you know, 20 bucks. So, uh, yeah, that's that's how I won that real knight in shining armor type stuff. Uh, went out and <laughs> interrupted the end of her date, gave her the bear. So <laughs> that's another love story start right there. I mean, that's a great, I mean, that's a much better love story than any start of relationship story I could ever tell you. Uh, <laughs> way more PG too. Um, <laughs> well, I mean, those are really sweet. Okay, guys, I'm checking Streamlabs one last time and then I'm going to ask my famous question. Oh, the... Uh... What was your what would your day be after that wasn't your famous yeah. question? No, 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 that's not my favorite. Oh, wow. no, my, okay. last, my last question comes from um uh a movie that from James Lipton. Oh defined me a lot, um, at least up until this point in my life. Um almost famous. Um mm. my favorite uh one of my favorite things about this movie is how it ends with William actually finally sitting down with Russell and he gets to actually interview him finally and the question that he asked is do you have to be happy to write a love song do you have to be sad to write a sad song what is it that you love about music Ooh. so i'll ignore the first two parts of that or do i need to answer that because i don't write songs but yeah what do i love about music i mean it's not different from what i love about movies i just gravitate towards movies a little more but it's uh, you know, in a world where you go around avoiding emotion, emotions are required for music and movies. And they are the great uh, miners that will dig for your emotion. And to truly enjoy those pieces of art, you got to allow the digging, you know, and the reward is amazing. I mean, I, I saw that one night in Miami and I was just a wreck. Now, granted, I probably haven't cried in a long time, but I was crying. This Malcolm X story just in general, just I find so emotional. And um, yeah, and so a song can do the same thing. You know, I, I can listen to, and then, you know, yeah, I think I've, I think I've answered that. <laughs> I could go on for more specifics and more like how the, the sometimes it's the, author of the song and their personal story that I can feel in the song, just, you know, drawing me into it. But I think it's just simply, it's the gateway to emotions you should be feeling anyway. 
I love that. Every time I ask that question, some everybody gives me a very different answer. And I, I every like I'm I'm almost dreading asking that question now because I'm like, I've asked it so many times that someone's gonna like repeat an answer. And I'm I'm so <laughs> sad for that day when it comes, but like that's it's perfect. Like no one has said anything like that. I love that answer. Um, you are the best. Uh thank you for coming on. Tell the kids where they can find you and what's coming out from you guys and all that fun stuff. Oh yeah, there is something brand new. So Adam and I, like I mentioned, we did 200 episodes of the movie Showcast from 2013 to 17. And then I've been doing this interview thing. But Adam and I are gearing up another podcast. Two actually. It was part of our New Year's resolution. So we're doing something called the Ford Fiesta. We're taking a look at every Harrison Ford movie from Dead Heat at a Merry-Go-Round to Call of the Wild. One episode per movie he's made. So that's not going to end for a couple of years. Uh, and uh, one, yeah, but three times a month, we'll be putting out a new episode of that. That fourth week of the month, we're going to put out a show called Movie Nonsense. And it's just sketches. Like we always did sketches on the old show. This will be just sketches. The old show was crazy. It was a 90 minute show with interviews and a guest and jokes and sketches and all sorts of stuff. This will be just sketches. And then the other one is just Harrison Ford because we're both in love with him. And if we don't go on somewhere and start talking about him, we'll explode. So that's going to be, we've already recorded the dead heat on a merry-go-round uh, and love the 1967 movie. Both of these, he has one scene in, you know, dead heat and a merry-go-round is his famous sort of first line as a bell boy um, or bell hop or you know, whatever it is. Yeah. He, but it's an amazing scene now that we've seen the movie. There's lots to talk about. So, and then the movie's crazy. James Coburn, 1967 swinging con man movie. Uh, and Love is a play I did in 1993 mm -hmm. that from, by Murray Schiskel that I never knew was a film with Jack Lemmon and Peter Falk, yet it's not good. And he has a line in it where he's 100% Harrison Ford to the max. So these are all uh, worth talking about in the early part of his career. So anyway. That's all going to be at the Movie Guys uh, YouTube page. If you go to the YouTube, the Movie Guys online, I think we had to get. The movieguys.net will have everything. So just go to the movieguys.net or follow at the Movie Guys everywhere there's social or at P Preston LA. That's me for, you know, pictures of the outdoors. <laughs> yeah, and all links are below. So, uh, and then you've got uh, that video that's coming out tomorrow uh, to go check out as well, right? Yeah, that I'll be talking to James Maslow from big time rush and about his new uh, movie career. So, yeah, and I guess he came in fourth and dancing with the stars. And he's, so he's uh, everything he's done before, not my demographic, but he made a movie. Now I'm paying attention. So right, that's fun. And I'd like to say it's good to be on your show because everyone probably knows this, but Rachel is a fantastic ambassador for the movie trivia showdown. There was no one better to play first because it meant I got to meet her early when I came into the showdown because She's good vibes and good people. Stop. I'm it's true. I've said that before, but it's totally true. I mean, imagine if I came in and like, you know, <laughs> like, and I got to know Bateman right away. It'd be all like strategy and do this. I'm like, we have a little fun. Rachel's fun. So, you know, Ben's awesome too, but you know, we, what I mean. <laughs> we, we were, we were, well, we're, we were, that, that team was silly fun. And I was so glad to get to play you guys. Cause I know that you would come in like, uh, previously, uh, to watch some matches and we had spoken previously and then you know Christian was like oh yeah you're first you're gonna play against uh against Paul and Adam and I'm like why does those names sound familiar he's like oh they've been coming in I'm like oh Paul and Adam yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. okay cool cool yeah, cool, cool. come in and see what the hell this nonsense was about turns out it's perfect for us yeah it's <laughs> awesome uh, and then you can find me at all the social links down below rm Silvestrini at uh twitter and instagram um next week I've got Robert Parker coming on what? Oh. I know the spider is going to be here. And then please don't forget tomorrow afternoon or evening, depending on where you are in the world um, at 4 PM Pacific time. Uh, please go to the Sh uh, Schmodown entertainment network uh, and come watch our award ceremony, which is always fun. And Mark's going to be hosting and he'll be funny as always. And probably wearing some ridiculous suit that he borrowed from Akuga. <laughs> um, which is like the highlight of any award ceremony or any time when Mark has to dress up. Um, and I need to just plug for Adam. Uh, oh, there's, for still sure. no, there's still no promo of the year award. And no. I know he, he's lobbying for his promo with uh, Molly Damon, where he, as she and, and Adam recreate the sort of forced conversation that, 
Kylo and Ray have across the galaxy, you know, to sort of goof on each other before their match. And uh, I thought that was great. So there's a there's no promo of the year, but in your hearts, vote for Adam. <laughs> vote for Adam. Uh, yes, Drew, I am a heel. Uh, that is one of the awards. Apparently, I'm up for two awards. I'm up for uh, heel team of the year and new team of the year. So, I mean, uh, voting is has been closed for like a week or so, I think. Um, so thank you for anybody who voted for me. Uh, if I don't get a chance to tell you, um, that's pretty amazing that we were even included in that. And if I win, I'm literally just going to be like crying, laughing and being like, this is bullshit. I love you guys so much. <laughs> um, I don't yeah, forget to vote for Video Drew for best middle name, Quarantine Love Story. Well, she said that Drew was her middle name. Was it middle name is Drew? So video Drew quarantine love story. But the, the, Drew, is, Drew, you're being enigmatic, which is I guess your thing. So oh, and we did have a uh, PC did uh, donate a little bit more. She said, uh, "Not a cynic." I was waiting for the bus. No, no one's a cynic, babe. No, I'm the biggest cynic on here. And uh, love stories are not cynical. Um, they just make me better because. There, never mind. Um, but on that note, again, thank you so much for being on here, Paul. I love you guys. Um, come back next week at 7.30, I believe, 7 o'clock uh, for um, my interview with Robert Parker. We're going to be talking all things awards. And then it's literally the night before the free agency special. So it's going to be fucking loaded with controversy. Who knows what's going to happen? Um, you guys are the best. Thank you so much. And now we get to do my favorite thing ever and do an awkward dance off. Bye.